inside at last. <laughs> Welcome, fellow Teffers, to Inside at Last, the one and only Thief dedicated podcast. My name is Alex, and today we have a special episode because for the first time we have a specific topic, and that is uh, the art behind Thief or the art of Thief. And for this, I have very qualified guests today, and I will name them in order I had contact with them uh, for this episode. And first of all, um, there is Dominus. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Hello, hello. Uh, maybe, thank you for having me. Maybe, yeah, it's great to have you. It was, I think, <laughs> it, was it your idea or mine, but we came together with this. Um, and then you made. I don't contact. remember. I think it's your. It was your idea. Uh, I don't know, uh, but it was great uh, that you made that possible. Uh, uh, so please give us a little introduction um, about why you are here. You know, there's a reason for that because you're an artist, and maybe you can talk or give us a little um, overview of what you're doing. Okay, uh, so I'm Dominus. Uh, I'm 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 an artist. I'm from Romania originally. Originally, now I live in in Sweden. Um, I worked a lot on uh, mobile video games. Uh, that's mostly what I do. Uh, but I'm also a gamer at the heart. And my first and one and only love is Thief. And I did a lot of Thief art in, in the last years. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, I'm mostly known for this now. Yeah. Uh, and um yeah check him out at um dominus with a z on twitter for example um yep. there you guys can check out a lot of uh his amazing work or look at the black parade by skaki um then the next guest and i think for the thief fans this is a very special guest because uh maybe he will give us some insights um daniel tron uh did i uh, pronounce that right um yeah. Yeah, um, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Um, yeah, please give us a little overview of uh, why you are here today. What is the main reason for that? And yeah, what you're doing today. It's very interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on board. I'm really excited to be here. The, um, uh, I was the... Uh, I was the uh, cutscene director and, uh, and uh, um, painter for Thief 1 through 3. And uh, I also had, uh, I was also involved with a lot of the, through that, uh, involved with a lot of the uh, story and uh, influencing, you know, helping out with the story, uh, along with, you know, Terry Burgess and crew. And um, uh, I worked in video games for a while. I switched to visual effects for film. Um, and you can see my stuff in movies like David Fincher's Zodiac and Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and um avengers endgame and uh recently in the mandalorian and uh the orville and um uh i am also a writer and a voice actor and i um make movies and i direct uh short films damn uh it's like we always have so many creative uh per persons here that's uh, amazing uh, it always makes my jaw go down um <laughs> So, and you're um, located in Los Angeles, right? Yes. Yeah, so perfect for films. Um, yeah, it's actually, it's been great uh, uh, living here, besides the fact that it's on fire currently. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a, like, it, there's a there's also a very strong video game community here as well, and a lot of great uh, video game companies. So I'm, uh, I'm still in touch with a bunch of people from, uh, from Thief, from the old days, uh, and some of them live in LA as well. It's very exciting. Cool. And last but not least, uh, I think the next guy doesn't need a big introduction. We already had him there. Um, he's an author and he's in the games industry as well. Skeki, welcome back. Uh, yeah, here. Hello. You almost invited yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, it was a great idea because, uh, you know, you put so many questions on the forums. And then uh, you came up with that, and it's like, yeah, uh, that's that's actually the best way to do it. Uh, so you can put it in your own words. And uh, yeah, thank you for kind of supporting me today. So uh, you are in a new role. Thanks. Yeah, um, and you are currently working on the Black Parade. And uh, for what Dominus made 
for example, the cover art. Um, uh, is there anything else you are, want to tell us uh, what, what you're doing at the moment? Or Because last time you had a kind of rough introduction because you joined during the episode because of my... Uh, <laughs> because I wasn't able to invite you properly. Um, no, I'm, uh, I'm currently really working on the Black Parade, the final stages. So we're still looking at maybe like six months to a year of development, but it's nearing the end. So I'm pretty, pretty pumped about it. So fingers crossed that everything goes in order and maybe we have a second lockdown so you guys have more time spending on this. Um, <laughs> And yeah. yeah, so before we dive deep into the art of thief, um, I want to know from Dominus, um, how did you stumble upon thief? If you maybe can remember that moment, that mm. time, and why do you love it so much? Oh man, um, don't remember exactly. I think it was ninety seven, eighty eight. I'm not sure exactly, uh, but I, it was a demo CD from a magazine uh, that had this game on it. And uh, I don't know, until then, for me, shooters were just shooters. You just shoot people. But this was like everything what's on his head, like mind blowing. Um, and I just played that demo again and again and again. And I loved it. Um, was it better yeah, manner, was, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure exactly what was different, but uh, probably everything. Um, I, th I love the mood, the the voices. Um, it was very intriguing because it looked medieval, but it has like some hints of um, industrial things going on around magic. And I was like, ah, oh, what? What's going on? So yeah, that that got me. How it old was... have How old have you been at that time? Mm -hmm. um, probably sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you've yeah. been a so you you're much older than i'm the, i'm the no speaking you're, you're younger than me i think but um uh to your thing uh baffert's manor i think the um outside of the map you know the city wasn't part of the demo if i remember that right you you started directly in front of um where you got down to the sewers um the, the little well and yeah i think that was the big difference uh, in that the demo mission uh yeah um so but yeah. I don't remember exactly. But I do yeah. remember that years later. I mean, uh, I think the next year I played the whole game, yeah. um, but not the whole game. I just play like a few missions. But then I stumbled upon uh, the um, the zombies. I was like, oh, this is too hard for me, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then uh, I think a couple of years later, when Thief Two came out, it was like, ah, oh, I just played the first one again. Well, let's try it. And I just played like a couple of days. It took me to finish it. I think I just in just played in one row. And then I, when I finished Thief One, I went out of the house, bought Thief Two, and continued to play Thief Two. So <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. I can totally relate to the zombie stuff, but we had that topic a lot in this uh, podcast. <laughs> uh, no, um, I love them. Little eleven-year-old, uh, yeah. But um, I think many people share like the same uh, impact uh, the game had on them, and that is really amazing. So, Daniel, uh, since yes, you are the insider, um, <laughs> yeah, can can you please give us like uh, an ideal? Um, when did you come to Looking Glass, and uh, wh when did did the whole thief thing start? Because it's the, you know I remember like Dark Camelot and was in right, the, right. yeah please, can you give us a little uh, yeah a timeline how everything came together? Uh, I was I was living in Boston and um, I was trying to make it as a uh, sort of traditional illustrator doing you know like uh, pen and ink art uh, and it was going pretty badly and uh, like I was only getting gigs doing like the illustrations on the sides of cardboard boxes to show what's in the box that kind of stuff like drawing lots of lawn chairs and things like this sounds uh, like fun yeah it was uh, it was insanely depressing uh, but uh, uh, a friend of mine uh, a really good friend named uh, Glenn uh, Weldon was um, uh, art director in a golf video game for um, Looking Glass Studios. And uh, and he got me in there uh, for an interview. And I ended up working um, on their golf video game, which is British Open Golf. Um, and 
uh, which is actually, you know, for the time, a, pr- a fairly cutting edge uh, golf simulator. And, yes. You know, golf is pretty boring, but it was very, it was a pretty fun, good looking game. We all and, remember the game, I think. Yeah. And, um, and in the background while I was working on that and when I was getting to know everybody at Looking Glass, um, uh, you know, uh, everyone was talking about Dark Camelot and um, as that was being developed. And I was, Really, really interesting. I've been a nerd my whole life, and so I, I uh, got in on the, the talks for that. And um, this is when Ken Levine was, uh, um, and his and his crew were in the building and uh, and all working on this together. And uh, I ended up doing some uh, concept art and um, sort of helping them conceptualize what the cutscenes would be. And I had been experimenting with After Effects. And so I um, I used some of my paintings that I was doing, which I, I mostly paint in Photoshop now, um, and animated some experiments in After Effects. And then that got me put on that project. Um, and uh, and you know, from there on, I was uh, I was just in the mix. Uh, but like uh, yeah, Dark Time, like because initially it was just you know like they had you know Looking Glass is that was a, a simulation company to start with. And uh, so the way that they approached games was, you know, uh, like a story grew out of the experience they wanted people to have. And uh, so uh, Dark Camelot didn't, I don't think it really, I mean, you can, it's better to interview other, like the, like Tim Stelmach and the, and, uh, uh, and the others about the, uh, the beginning of this, but it's like the, uh, it was mainly um something to hang the entire experience on and the experience was this stealth gameplay and uh and so uh the more they talked about stealth the less the camelot concept seemed to work um because you know if if you're a knight you're running around and chopping people with swords and it just became clearer through design that like the really interesting thing to do was to not fight and to try to avoid fighting and um that was the and that sort of synced up with my style of uh filmmaking and illustration which is like you know the hiding in shadows motif that's sort of like um you know that uh, caravaggio style of painting you know the uh you know like you mostly the painting is mostly black except for little highlights right uh uh like those two modes of thought really synced up well together and i got really really involved with the development of that after that point so you've been at the right spot at the right time. Yeah, I was very, very lucky. I was like, I, I like, I was making money, like I was not making money on my art. I was making money like working at like Blockbuster Video, uh, and uh, and and paying, you know, barely paying my very, very low rent, and <laughs> uh, and uh, to luck into meeting these people and this incredible group of folks uh, is, uh, you know, it's one of the best things that ever happened in my life. I can imagine that. Um, so then you suddenly were part of this amazing project. Um, so how much could you actually contribute to, um, to, to this, you know, um, did you have any influence or how did the whole art style develop, you know? Um, yeah, because you must, they must've started somewhere. Yes. You said the dark Camelot and I think I can imagine. Yeah, it started it out much more. more it started much more traditionally uh and i think that's actually one of the great things like what makes thief work so well and like dominus when you were saying this sort of like the the like bringing up the balance between you know the medieval style and the sort of new tech style you know the uh, yeah. steampunk style like uh like the steampunk angle just started to creep in more and more and that allowed us to get a little bit weirder and weirder with the the uh the storytelling and i think it's the like uh once we started developing the cutscenes, like everybody like the the visual style that I was using and talking with like um you know Tim and Terry Brogius and you know Dorian Hart and uh, Laura Baldwin and everybody like like the vibe that was being mixed together out of this very traditional medieval stuff um and the and this very sort of stranger art style um was working was producing a really interesting effect and like the and this i, I have to give all the credit in the world to uh, mark lazat who's the uh, art lead on the show and who's like a brilliant artist himself and he like he had constructed a really believable um deep medieval slash victorian flavor and 
and he has a he has a huge knowledge of art history and uh, uh when i started bringing uh you know and the cutscene team started bringing the the sort of stranger elements to the table he totally embraced that and uh and and started weaving it into the world that he was creating visually for the whole game and so past that point it really it was just everyone bouncing these ideas around in a very excited way um mm. because they could tell that something really fresh was happening like there was some sort of weird alchemy happening between these styles of artwork and uh, like i said it, like it started to unify with a kind of gameplay that the uh the design team was making and so like and the experience of looking glass like there it was such a, it was a like it was such a communal creative um you know uh boiling pot of interesting ideas you know like um everyone felt very open to uh bring anything they thought to the table and uh and so you ended up with uh really strange spooky interesting well informed very original stuff that uh i nobody was doing anything like that at the time yeah that's what i love about uh, the, the thief um, mystery universe i guess it's just it's not pure steampunk uh mm -hmm. it has this medieval but uh, maybe renaissance the tiny tiny bits of i don't know industrial and magic in it it's yeah. just enough to make it interesting and, and fresh I, I think when when you just would read the art concept of thief or the whole design concept just by text you would say this could never work uh but right. when you see it the final product then you you're like wow this is such an amazing as you uh, described it like a mix of so many things but it's it's so well put together to to one really unique outstanding scenery or, or uh, surrounding and what whatever uh yeah, I think that that I think that's why so many people maybe still are stuck to that because uh, there is nothing in comparison. And well, yeah, that's it. like oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. I didn't mean yeah, to I, you know, I was gonna say uh, also the uh, the blending of medieval and magitech, well, as I like to call it, mm -hmm. uh, serves the, the mechanics too because you have lights you can put out which are torches and electric exactly. lights that you cannot interact with and they stay there. Yeah. That is yeah. one question I would have. Um, maybe it. Um, uh, it works here. Um, was there like a combination between, hey, we can design it this way, but would the gameplay maybe benefit from that? Or, um, you know, was I, I, I can imagine there was like maybe a connection or combination of both. Uh, yeah, it was all just like, I guess that's the idea is like everyone was inspired by everybody else. And like I've, you know, like we would, you, you play through, you know, uh, these uh, these amazing levels and that, as they're being developed and i would use um you know a screen capture from something i thought was really frightening or or spooky and uh and and start paintings off of that you know and then i would show those around uh and that would get other people having ideas and uh and i think that you know unlike other like i've i've had the luck of working at a lot of great places with a lot of great people um but i've rarely worked at a place where um everyone was so wide open to everybody else's concepts because they just it was just like bringing toys to the table you know and like when you talk about we, we talked a little bit of the uh, music um before we started recording and the like um eric brogius's stuff and uh you know with um and the sound design with um kamal amarasingham and um uh, ramin jawadi has gone on to you know, a tremendous uh success like these guys were all like you know eric is a well, can, uh, eric and terry brogius came from a uh an electronica band essentially from in the 80s mm. 90s and the idea right. of yeah and, and wonderful band incredible band and yeah. um and the that when they started scoring when uh, eric started scoring the game uh you know, the last thing that people would have expected to put on a medieval game would be techno, <laughs> you know. Um, but because of the the, the already uh, technological elements that were sneaking into the game, it all just made sense and it felt really alive. And so you couldn't go to work without feeling um, inspired. And uh, and I hate to like I'm romanticize the whole thing or I mean, it sound like I'm romanticizing it, but it's 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 a it's a real it's 
I didn't realize how uh, how lucky I was until later in my life. Like that kind of um, intersection of talent is very rare, but that kind of intersection of talent that is um, not protective of their own uh, way of doing things. You know, like they're not trying to shut other people's ideas out. They're trying to mix everything together and share everything. Uh, is what made it what made it what it, what it was so and, you you were like like a, a, a like a, an end structure you know every yeah, exactly. one uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. absolutely that sounds amazing yeah so um one thing to the music i think sometimes it was annoying uh especially in the <laughs> casino um, <laughs> right. I, just, was... i just replayed this so that's pretty fine <laughs> and it's like you can't hear if someone's talking or recognized you uh, that so, some decisions right. and i think in the second game where you had that strange rock band medieval rock band i don't know um right. uh, that was really used for the whole um promotion stuff uh yeah <laughs> but that but on the other hand like uh when you see all the cutscenes and and you know the the silent music and stuff it's it's so amazing with all those noises and yeah it's, it's a piece of art in uh, most cases there as well um so uh you were talking about the cutscenes before skaggy do you think uh, what your cutscene question would fit now um let's see i have a few hang on <laughs> you had that with the um when they were made Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my questions is: um, Do you remember exactly at which point the uh, final cinematics were being made? Uh, it diff it differed from uh, Thief One through Three, um, and like Thief One was very sort of uh, as we were going. You know, eventually it, it fell into a schedule, um, but it was uh, it was responding to where the game was at and how it was changing um so it was a little bit more fluid and uh and and done concurrently um thief 2 was a little bit more traditional um as i remember it anyway where there was a like we had scheduled it out there are much there are com the cutscenes were more complex and uh we had to you know we grew the team a little bit and uh uh and so there was a little bit more straightforward organization about how to do that uh whereas like thief one was we we hadn't <laughs> because we hadn't made thief yet we didn't know how to make thief uh, uh hmm. but thief <laughs> thief two we were much more um uh, together in what we were trying to pull off um and uh, and then thief three was done uh remotely where i had i had a uh an animation company that i co-owned uh that was doing the work uh for the thief group but i wasn't part of their development Uh, and so that was uh, that was that was more like a, a straightforward sort of contracting uh, gig. But, but, uh, but could, I, could it be like when the in industry was shifting? You know, you know, at that point it was a different mm -hmm. industry, like in the compared to the mid late '90s. Um, yeah. so it was more professional, more scheduled. Was it like that? Uh, yeah, it was, and uh, but it was still in a place where you know. Um, at least from my experience, like games and game companies were just struggling because like the business it was establishing itself in a way and like it was like it was more um, popular than ever, but uh, it hadn't yet gotten to the level of um, uh, like, you know, like video games today are an entire lifestyle, you know, and it's mm. it, it dominates, you know, you know, like it dominates most of Uh, biggest like, industry as I it's the biggest know. industry in the world you know and it's like the biggest artistic industry in the world and um and you can actually you know like you know uh have a career and live a good life working in games you know like there's still a lot of this you know like there's a couple of very famous sort of uh abuse of workers issues that have happened uh at various companies but uh but overall it's like it's as legitimate as as uh movies have been you know and uh Uh, but at that point, like in the early 2000s, uh, like it was still um, getting sort of established. And yeah. so the money was tight and uh, the schedules were, were hard. And so the like with Thief, Thief One, it was essentially it felt like a, you know, like <laughs> it's a bunch of MIT guys and college, you know, college kids getting together to make something. So it was like we didn't even realize. I mean, we had we knew that the company 
uh, in a sort of general way was, uh, you know, getting less and less financially viable, you know. Um, uh, but still, when it ended, we were pretty shocked. Like we just like way, the way we were working with each other was just like it felt so natural and good and creative that uh, when it ended, because you know business couldn't sustain it, we were like, "But that's impossible!" You know, like I can't believe that that it, that it ended, and it was a real it was a real trauma, I think, for everyone involved. You know, and uh, it was hard to recover emotionally from that. Um, whereas, like by the time we got to uh, Thief Three, like the industry was an industry and everybody sort of understood that. Uh, and it was still, uh, at least from my perspective, um, a, a bit of a s struggle and a bit of a strain for everybody. And, uh, and so it was a lot more, I think that it showed in the pressure that was on, you know, uh, on them and on games, uh, other games we were related to, um, uh, to, to really be sort of uh, economically viable. And uh, and that hurt production and took the the fun out of it a bit. So uh, then a question about the the cutscenes, if I may. Um, sure. Where did you find like the for specific cutscenes? Uh, where did you find the inspiration, or did you make like mood boards, or how did you get oh, yeah. the result? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I, I, all of my like all my stuff is. I mean, it's all <laughs> like uh, I'm a big movie fan, uh, and so I pull a lot of inspiration from. You know, film noir and things like that. Um, Art-wise, I, I I'm a big fan of Caravaggio and any Chiascuro, uh stuff, essentially. Um, and uh, which is like I, when I, when I when I paint something, I start with a black canvas, and then I start uh, I I paint as little light into it as I can. You know, uh, and uh, and the value of that, like you look at any of like Caravaggio stuff, like you know the Judas Kiss or any of that stuff, like um, like the stuff that's illuminated is extraordinarily detailed, uh, but then it falls off into this very vague, dreamy flavor, you know, that, of stuff you can barely see, and um, and that uh, to me works with movies very well because like my favorite movies are the ones that um leave an enormous amount to the audience's imagination and so uh when we were making the cutscenes like we you know uh uh you know terry brogius and i talked a lot about uh the third man and uh stuff like that you know these older black and white films mm -hmm. where you'd have like an almost an entirely black frame with one hard light shining on something and then the bounce off of that light would hint at other stuff um but you were left to sort of fill it in with your mind. And so all the reference that we use uh, sort of revolves around that. And I think that's, again, that's part of the, like the reason why a thief succeeds uh, tonally, you know, and the sort of the mood of it succeeds so well is because that uh, ideology is throughout the entire production. Because like, it's like when you, when you make a movie like that, or you make a game like this, um, you know, if you look at, like if you look at a movie like say Blade Runner, which is another giant influence uh, for it, like movies like the uh, uh, the Keep and Blade Runner and stuff like this, where Blade Runner doesn't tell you very much about what's going on in Blade Runner. Like it tells you as little as it possibly can, and because of that, your brain's trying to put it together. And I think that's why Blade Runner became this legendary movie. Like if they had explained everything in Blade Runner, it, people would have gone, "Oh, okay, story's done. I get it." Um, but because they barely let you know anything, they just give you these breadcrumbs, the audience likes what they see and then tries to write the connections between those points themselves. And, uh, and that, because they participated in the creation of it, is why it hung around so long. And the same thing, I think, is true for Thief. You know, like the, the art style of Thief and the design style of Thief is why people still make Thief, in my opinion, why people are still hooked on making Thief levels today. I mean, yeah. it's, you could talk about that. I mean, it's just like, but that's where that inspiration comes from. Um, I just wanted, it just came to me, like when you were saying that and you, you said that the whole game was designed with that in mind, like, you know, it, it's like always, I love missions where that, that have a mysterious thing. Like you just mm -hmm. uh, read something, just a readable that doesn't give you many clues, but 
as you said, you, you can make up things in your mind. Oh, maybe, maybe oh, what may, might happen here? And then it, you know, get you get interested and you're looking around for clues. Like maybe you find more to this. And uh, sometimes it's just like uh, you you have a readable in that mission, and then you have a readable in another mission that connects to this. And then suddenly the big picture comes. And um, but for that time, until you find that, you are you know thinking about it. And mm -hmm. you do you don't have answers and um yeah so the whole g game um is kind of like that uh if you guys would it agree. pulls you in right like yeah. it, it, it sucks you in you know because you're now part of the creation of it you yeah, know think, like you, you were working on it as well there right? are some famous quotes that are like i don't remember it but like, like uh, it's more uh, interesting what you don't see uh Absolutely. instead of what you see uh yeah but uh dominus or Skeppy, you wanted to say yeah, I want to say also it's pretty obvious that the uh, of the noir films are a pretty big inspiration because the plot of the game itself is a very classic noir story, oh, yeah. just Absolutely. taking place in a in a weird world, but otherwise it's very similar. You have the wary anti-hero, the femme fatale, mm -hmm. and the guy that betrays you, and all the heists and stuff. It's very classic, mm -hmm. and, and he always talks very... talks to you and explains. Yes. some stuff to you that happened like in the noir films as well oh, this is, yeah. and i have to give credit to uh this is all like that from the root of it was like a heavy ken levine influence ken loves this stuff as much as we do and uh you know he when he was you know writing about the possibility of you know sneaker gameplay uh like everything was was put in that kind of phraseology like i know that like like ken's favorite movies are movies that do exactly this stuff and have like that kind of narration and this kind of plot. And uh, it was a, it was a big, big sway for us. Uh, and like, I think that that's the, uh, like, there's something so and you, you go back and you watch these old, maybe, or if you watch even like Orson Welles films or stuff like this, which are essentially film noir as well. Like these, like these things are so like, it's so intense and they're so personal um, in the way they're presented. Like they're very, very high drama in terms of what's happening. And then the, like, like you bring up Skeki, it's like the main character is very distant, you yeah. know? And so like this tremendously sort of, like all this passion is happening around the main character. And then the main character is like, of course, I don't care about that stuff. <laughs> 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 and like yeah. Garrett is like the perfect example of that. Like they really, really nailed it. With yeah, Garrett, like Garrett doesn't care. I like it. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. And of course you have, uh, you know, Stephen Russell like pulling off the greatest voice acting of all time oh, yeah. <laughs> to carry awesome. it over. I think <laughs> that's the thing as well, that uh, if the vo voice would have, wouldn't nail it, uh, it would give you another feeling, you know, all the art could not do it. Uh, yeah. But, but without that. speaking of voice yeah. acting, Dan voiced a few characters. Uh, <laughs> looking at the credits, you voiced uh, the eye, which is a character <laughs> that we all know. You voiced Ramirez. Uh -huh. You voiced Brother uh -huh. Renault with the one of the ghosts yes. <laughs> in the Quantum Cathedral. Right. You voiced one of the guards. Right. I think you voiced the serious guard. Uh, you yeah, voiced, the guard uh, that's always arguing with the other guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you so voiced a, a Hammerite. And right. finally, you voiced an eight, the Ape Beasts and one of the Keepers. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The eight beasts. Yeah, yeah. The eight beasts. <laughs> can can you give us an impression? I don't know if I can still do the eight beasts. That'd be that might be tough. I can do the I can still do the guards. You know, like because uh, I was I, I I played I replayed Thief one and two uh, last month. And, Come, uh, give it, give us a taste. All right, yeah, like the best I can do for the guards anyway is the. Uh, uh, hey, what do you think you're doing? Ah, <laughs> like, nice. Like, <laughs> and like there's a couple of great arguments between the drunk guard and me that uh, like it's just a great radio show like perfect perfect uh, oh, yeah. uh, writing. And, and that voice was the inspiration for my one thug i did for uh, can i say it's Skeki? yeah sure i did for the black parade because i was inspired by that guy because uh, you know i was trying to do different voices and and the uh, production team said oh no it's to this and to that and then i got uh, you know, I thought like, oh, let's take this voice as an uh, inspiration, and then they loved it. You know, um, so, <laughs> it's so, so good, it's actually, so fun. It's, it's besides Benny, I think it's my personal favorite God's voice. I, I love it um, <laughs> because he's so angry but so funny at the same time. He's um, so frustrated, like he gets yeah. like totally. He's just like pissed <laughs> off at everything all the time. It's, my it's my my, my favorite is their final argument in the mission masks in Thief Two. 
uh, where, where Benny is like, uh, I would be, I would rather be inside guarding one one of the exhibit exhibit exhibits. He kind of say the <laughs> word, <laughs> and, and, and you're, and you're I, like, oh, I'm, I'm stuck with you all the time. <laughs> Here I am. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. It's a blast. And we would have such fun recording that stuff because didn't they have? Was the one of yeah. the first conversations in the first mission, like when he said, "Like, hey, why, why don't we have more guards inside?" And then the angry guy yes. said, "Because you want to catch him on the outside before they get in." <laughs> yeah. That's oh, unbelievable! Oh man, yeah. like the, the comedy in those routines is just gold. I, I think I want to say that it was all Laura Baldwin's writing, but I'm not. I'm not sure who. Uh, I think it was Laura, but like I was, we were laughing out loud reading those things. It was just incredible. Like, yeah, uh, it's, it's and, good to, yeah, it's good to have these um, uh, moments of levity with voice acting because the world itself is so very dark and grimy. And, oh yeah, and you, yeah. you have these Absolutely. hilarious conversations between guards. It's really funny. Yeah. I think oh, it's, it's sometimes underrated what the guards actually do and how great the voice acting and, and the uh, what they say is because imagine like you, you, we know that we have played like hundreds of fan missions and we hear all those lines all the time but I yeah. don't you know I'm 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 not fed up with it you know no, it's like, you know, like the great the great part about that is that like it like just like I was saying with the other stuff like it like that came around from a design idea like that wasn't because you know we wanted to, like more storytelling it was because you know they were like how can we lure people into being quiet and listening the way they hmm. should you know and uh and so you so you have to you don't just say okay so they have to listen to the guards to do the thing you write really clever funny stuff that you want to listen to and so yeah. it, uh, it becomes a natural choice to make that part of the gameplay because you don't you don't want to miss the radio show you know and uh and it's you know it like so many games and here's why i'm the old dude who complains about games now but the uh but so many games today sort of uh make you have to do things instead of making things interesting enough that you want to do them uh and i think that that's uh like i see uh, like a lot of triple a titles are like that where you i i'll um you know i feel like i have to sit through long cutscenes, or I have to sit through listening to um, overhearing conversations. And, um, and that's because that stuff, the, it sort of, it feels tacked on as a part of, as opposed to part of how the design should work. And, uh, and that's what interrupts the flow of the feeling of the game for me. And when you go, when I went back and played Thief, I was like, I could spend most of this game barely moving and just listening and trying to get closer to listen and that is a game you know and it's really 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 brilliant i would know, totally, totally sign that um one thing uh, that occurred to me because before this episode i was thinking of like in comparison uh, games that came around uh, that came out at the same time and um, would you guys agree that i even because i thought and thought and thought of so many games of that time but thief was in my opinion um or from at least the games i remember the first one that did so much in with cutscenes with really well designed cutscenes you know look at that time when a game started back in the days it was like a 3d rendered intro movie from one or two minutes looking like a trailer and that was the big oof wow and then yep. the rest was told with more boring maybe just text and animated faces right. um and you guys pulled different stuff. I, I think you you have been the next step. Uh, like, you know, really conversations you could listen to into in the world. And then you had those um, uh, cutscenes that have different styles as well. Because you have a story cutscene. Um, and they are really well painted and really colorful with, I think, all the art design you formerly described. You know, with the dark uh, scenes mm -hmm. and the details uh, in the light. And um, then, of course, you had those um, briefing videos mm -hmm. um, that were just the, uh, like like painted on paper, you know, like scribbled yeah. kind of yeah. kind of. And uh, so, would you guys agree that this was the first, or at least one of the first games that did this big step? Mm, I don't know. Maybe maybe one of the first. Yeah, maybe not the very first, but it had a pretty lasting impact on. Quite a few people, I guess. It's more cinematic they... than others, I guess. Can, can yeah. you name a game from that era 
uh, that was comparable in, in, in those fields? Because even System Shock, that was also from Looking Glass, didn't yep. it in that way. Homeworld, maybe, but that was later. Mm, so, um, maybe, uh, I think Abe's ODC was released at about the same time. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. That, okay. That, that had some really impressive cinematics as well. Yeah, it's really, right. that was really good. Was excellent, excellent. And it also had like uh, in-game moments that were interesting to watch and listen to. Uh, I, I, yeah, that, that's a good example, actually. But yeah, I feel, I feel it was uh, like we were like it was definitely part. Thief was definitely part of a wave of that. I think I mean I agree. I think that it's like uh, there were a lot of people, uh, you know, in uh, in many games that were thinking about how to make that a more fluid experience. You know, and uh, and so it was. I would say that it's fair to say that that's the '97 is about the year when people started doing that. Um, I, but I, I can't say that we were. I can't say that we were the first. I think we were of the first. You know, and we uh, and the, and our solution was good. Um, yeah. But everyone was really trying to figure out a way to you know sort of bridge the storytelling because I mean it was the you know by that point like you know story was started to become a deeper and deeper part of games and you had to start to express this stuff cinematically as a matter of course you know and the uh and when we were doing thief you know like there's you can only do so many of the you know the expensive or comparatively expensive color fully animated cutscenes so we had to figure out a way to do the mission briefings in a uh in something that worked but wasn't this production heavy um but the you know like our our solution worked i think and like and, and because it was sketchy it lent into the same idea like you're getting this vague view of the world um helps out the flavor of the world but i mean all this stuff comes from a uh, very sort of uh direct you know it's like there's there's problems that we're trying to solve that relate to how do we uh convey information and how do we get this done on time you know um and it's the inventiveness that the team attacked it with that uh that that made it great as opposed to like i'm very proud of the cutscenes um but they wouldn't have been possible without uh the whole company agreeing to that as a method of design does that well, make sense yeah, yeah you know. of course. but it's, yeah. It's, it's good you did that because uh the the game that was released before was terra nova strike for centauri <laughs> and that one used a full motion capture yeah, yes. yeah yes that's right. That's right. and uh, I, i'm glad that you you guys decided to use uh the, the style for the dark project for that game because <laughs> right. that would have been very very different I have yeah to yeah like that yeah, there's. Uh, I actually worked on on Turnover. I'm a I'm a voice in Turnover as well, a minor minor voice, and uh, I know that I'm uh, one of the uh, one of the writers was uh, is one of my best friends, a really great guy named um, Ben Hansford, and uh, uh, and <clears throat> uh, like there are quotes from the those FMVs that we all still say today, <laughs> huh. like, like the turn of FMVs, like they were very expensive to make those things. And uh, it just shows like, you know, the technology was not really up to snuff to make that work. Cause it's, it's kind of funny that like FMVs, like, you know, we watch movies all the time, you know, like it, seeing actors on the screen shouldn't be weird and upsetting, but it's, especially at that point most game companies were so small and the idea of trying to shoot actors in in some sort of like you know expensive science fiction setting you know when we're shooting on a crappy green screen or whatever it is and uh and the difference between that like the uh, what we wanted to do versus what we could do plus the difference between the visuals of the fmv and the visuals of the game it was just so stark that that's what destroyed FMVs. <laughs> like you just like, oh man! Like it, it makes the crappy stuff look even crappier. <laughs> <laughs> but then for for Thief, uh, you also had uh, in some clips uh, like uh, silhouettes of actors. Uh, oh yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah, but just, and, but, and, but just the silhouettes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, what uh, what, and what was the choice be behind it? Why, why did you go with that? Uh, like we, there's a couple of times when you can see the actors a little bit um but mainly it was uh it was because we couldn't figure out how to animate stuff um using using uh after effects and and uh and the painting and so we'd go well we have to break this out as a you know as a as a green screen um actor 
And so we were, we tried to do it as little as possible so there wouldn't be too many giveaways. Um, but we ended up, I thought it ended up being pretty good. And like, there was, there's a couple no, of times. No, it does well. Yeah. Yeah. It integrates relatively well. Even like, I think we, you know, we got better and better at it. Um, it, it always gives me a smile. You know, yeah. because it's like, especially when I saw the Black Parade trailer, because uh, there is that one moment, and, and you know, you see that um, the the you know the the coat is just a little. Uh, at least it's, it appears that it's just a simple coat that would have never been uh, working in the medieval times. Right, right, right. But uh, it has some charm. You know, yeah, it, has, uh, it has a handmade yeah. charm to it. Like this you is know, yeah, exactly the, the, the only way metal the no, the knockout movement. You know, the way he yeah. moves the, the the blackjack is like no, it wouldn't even do a scratch. You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, and right. it's the same in the Black Parade trailer, which I like too. It's just really cool. Well, um, this is the stuff like I love. Like I love indie film, right? And yeah. indie film is loaded with this stuff where it's like people trying to do things that are way above their ability uh, <laughs> is really like way I mean, just technological ability. I don't mean artistic ability, but like way like it's like they're reaching for something that should be totally unattainable. And you can see the seams on it is great because it makes me excited for them, you know? And yeah. I think that like all these, all these cutscenes like have that, that, uh, that like the evidence of the love of what's being done is huge. And, and, and that, conquer. Yeah, all the yeah, movies. Right. They were shitty, right. but I love them in the remake. But they're really cool. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They're super cool. Yeah, man. I love I love that stuff. And uh, and I think that like the uh I think you know, I this is why I also like indie games like far, far over triple A titles today. Like indie games are where all the interesting things happen, uh, for me. And uh when you see games like Hollow Knight or um, you know, don't starve or stuff like this, where it's just like they're not trying to make things look like acceptably polished. You know, like uh, they look rough, and that's what makes it interesting. Uh, but but and... there, but there's two two sides because I think um, there are indie games like Ori, for example, that look amazingly like polished. Sure, absolutely. And there's, right. So yeah, I think the mix is great. You look at Minecraft. You know, it's ugly as mm -hmm. hell. But it's but charming. That's why it's great. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Yeah, I think that because like I, you know, and you look at stuff like uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the game that's very popular right now, where you're in the on the spaceship. It's like the thing, but you're on a spaceship. Oh, among us. Among us. Yeah. Like, uh, like I love that. It's like, like the art is so lo-fi. Like I'm just like that's amazing that that's just ac accepted as, you know, charm as a as as the way the thing looks like a, and like because there's a time pretty much up until you know the late 2000s when uh the only thing you could judge things by was photorealism yeah and uh and you know like my, i'm I, like i make my money today but as a photorealist painter that's what i do you know most days of my life and uh because i'm doing matte paintings for movies and you have to try to integrate photos into you know, VFX and all this stuff. Um, so it's not like I think photorealism is bad. It has its place. But people forget that it's a style. You know, it's not reality. It's a style. And uh, when you start putting the... Or, and Dominus, I don't know how you feel about this, but I, I, su I suspect you might agree. It's like when you start putting the, the judgment of quality outside of the art in some way like when you start saying like well it doesn't look very realistic that's why it's bad <laughs> like i'm just like that's dumb like who cares if it looks real yeah. it's a, does it look cool yeah you know uh, yeah. the final product i think it matters for me it doesn't matter how you achieve that final product it's it it's it's impactful yeah so yeah there it is. that's all that's all that matters it's i think here matters. we come to your art dominus because um the way your art looks always has like a realistic touch you know like the the the, mm. the the heights you know everything seems believable but then it's like really like brushed and and this gives it like this this magical appear that that's yeah. my impression of your art so would you agree and and, and maybe you you can talk about your inspiration to, for your art um, <laughs> um yeah. thanks man i don't know uh, probably just bad art i don't know um <laughs> it's uh i think a lot of the inspiration from my for my style at least color wise came from thief actually um i learned to draw digitally about the time after i played thief one and two so um 
a lot of the color uh, knowledge that came from what I learned online. Uh, so yeah, be, Thief being a big inspiration, you see a lot of my uh, palette being orange and blue all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you on that one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, well, and like I, I have to say, like I'm, I'm a huge fan of your painting, and uh, Thanks, you know, uh, and I think that, like, it's, it's fantastic from the outside to see your style and your, uh, and your palette sort of change and evolve, because uh, I, I agree, like you know, your very early stuff is, <laughs> is very much like Thief, but then it becomes, in my opinion, much, much better than Thief and much more, uh, much richer. Uh, and like it starts getting into the territory of uh, uh, what's his name? The uh, it's a Polish painter. Oh, yeah. uh, it's uh, Delinsky. Uh, Be- Beksinski. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is not, yeah, that's <laughs> Beksinski. Yeah, like yeah. like it's it's tremendous uh, for everybody else who's listening. The uh, Zadislaw Beksinski is the guy who inspired H.R. Gear, um, and I really recommend looking up his material. It's very spooky and very strange. Um, but it's also has this very interesting uh, color uh, palette to his work, and I very think that, yeah, and it's like, and he's a- able to be creepy. Uh, and I'm saying this, uh, I'm saying this in the direction of complimenting, complimenting your work. Does the same thing is the uh, you're able to be spooky and uh, and create a uh, and, ev- and evoke a very supernatural, upsetting mood, but. Uh, but by using unusual colors to do that, like pastels, and, and still uh, vibrant, and still very, it's very living and very vibrant. You know, like you look at something like Giger, and I love Giger's work, and I love Al- Aliens, one of my favorite films of all time. Um, but he's leaning very hard on it being bleak and desaturated and uh, and unpleasant. Yeah, he used whereas, a lot of grays. Yeah. Right, so whereas your stuff. Um, uh, like represents the real world in terms of real color, uh, but it puts a strange and uh, ups- uh, like a an upsetting spin on it in a really uh, emotional way for me, and I really love it. Mm. I love the Thank blue you, wood cover, for example. I just posted it in our chat. Oh, that's great! Uh, uh, yeah, that, terrific. That's- so amazing because I think that totally nails what we were talking about earlier. Like it gives you some idea of what might going on but it doesn't answer anything it's just yeah. a guy with a knife and a lantern in his hand and that he's walking into a in, into that tunnel thing that gate and absolutely you, yeah. and, you, and, and in your head it just spins around like okay he he seems to be very aware and ready for a fight or whatever so there must be something bad you know yeah. Yeah. Uh, and 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 the cover says so much about the game and says nothing you know it, and it pulls uh, you in because we're looking at it right now in the chat and like everybody look up gloomwood <laughs> which is both an, an amazing game by the way i can't wait for the full thing to come out yeah, oh yeah. uh it's it's like if you like old thief like gloomwood is like the a plus plus new thief oh, for me. i Just know totally... I, I know i know dylan rogers a bit the uh, developer of gloomwood and that's probably the highest praise you can give uh, him can i tell you man like i was like yeah i was knocked out I, I wrote to dylan i was like that is phenomenal dude it's just i nice. like i was i stayed up till like three in the morning finishing the demo and like you know when i have to get up at six in the morning that's that's that means i love it it, <laughs> so. su- it sucked you in actually yeah. it really sucked you in um I, I made a let's play on our channel uh but guys play it by your on your own you can get it on steam for example as a demo, so yeah, and uh, amazing cover artworks in there. So. Yeah, and uh, and this and this cover artwork, the thing that we're looking at right now, it does exactly like what we've been talking about in all the other aspects. It's like it's kind of undefined, but in a way that makes me go, "What the hell is going on?" Like I'm worried. Looking at the looking at the painting, I feel worried, and that's what gets me in it. You know, and like I'm doing, I'm doing a, a much of the storytelling work. You know, like the 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 painting isn't being detailed about the story. It's but it wants me to detail the story in my mind, and that's why I'm I'm totally sucked in. Mm-hmm. So compliments you, over compliments, in that yeah, I, I can't take this too much. It's, I have no, to... it's it's incredible. I'm re- I, there are very I, I rarely get to talk to, uh, you know. Uh, my favorite artists and uh, you are one of them and i'm very excited to uh, very excited to say that um thank uh, you I'm, I'm super humble oh it's 
awesome, dude. I, uh, I can see a red face through the audience. Yeah, trust me. I'm, <laughs> I'm blushing. Very exciting. Very exciting. Um, I also it want to... Uh, if, oh, go ahead, please. No, I'm just saying, like, for me, it's like I uh, I got inspired by your work. So all I did is... <laughs> that means a lot to me. Circle oh, closes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I really want to spend, before I forget to do it, I really want to shout out uh, to uh, one of my great friends over the years, uh, Jen Robota, uh, who was my co-painter on these cutscenes. I haven't got a chance to mention her yet, um, but she is uh, she's, she's a painting. She's a painter today and does book covers and it's wonderful. Um, but uh, yeah, her, uh, her partnership in and working on these cutscenes was you know, unbelievably, and it was just invaluable to me. And she, she helped uh, shape the uh, the direction and the choices for what we were painting and how we uh, approached it. And so I just want to, I'm sorry to inter like insert that, but I realized I didn't get said. Totally, that's had. awesome. She's yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, Jen, Jen about to look up her art right now. Absolutely fantastic. Well, well, guys, you have to write down all the names you're dropping so I can put it in the description later. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. And uh, that's actually a nice transition because I was going to ask if uh, what what exactly did she and you draw and or paint in the cutscenes? And did you do the briefings as well or just the cutscenes? Uh, I, uh, I did a bunch of the briefings as well. Um, she also worked on the... Uh, on the briefings, uh, we split the duties on the cutscenes, um, and uh, I think that um, I would say mainly uh, I would do the like the wider, more establishing stuff, and she would work on the uh, the closer, more personal stuff. You know, like uh, uh, close-ups of people's faces and stuff where we really needed to evoke. Uh, uh, particular emotions like she's 10 times the painter that i am in terms of character work and uh uh and uh and it was really uh like she she had a grasp of that that i that i i still struggle with you know and um uh and, and so we would we would i would do all the storyboards for this stuff first and then we would cut through them and pick out the ones that you know oh who would be able to handle the most appropriately or, or the fastest. And then we would share those files and sort of cut them up um, into usable animatable files for After Effects. Um, and so that would go out to, uh, you know, uh, Neil Foreman and other uh, animators uh, who, you know, once we started animating, we'd realize what, uh, what was needed and we'd go in and paint more stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, she was a, uh, 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 her work on on the, the primary cutscenes and working out the um the the briefing stuff was uh, enormous. Her, and also, I should say that if you look up her art now, it's uh, Robota Lesser, Robota Dash Lesser. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's really really true. I, I think someone linked to her uh, Instagram account or something on uh, the uh, TTLG forum, but still exists. <laughs> which yeah. Is nice. yeah. She's and, really uh, great. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. And. Um, Oh, I had a question, but I... Oh, yeah. Uh, speaking of the storyboards, uh, were, uh, were these used for the um, blooper reel? Or uh, were these made for, <laughs> for the blooper reel? I, I'm not really sure. I, like, I saw you guys talking about the blooper reel. I don't remember what the blooper reel is. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, send it over. Like, I did see a lot of, um, of the early art. Ah, oh, here we go. Great. Oh, look at this. Yes. <laughs> He's on oh, my God. I love it. All right. Yes, I'm opening this up. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, that's about right. That looks like my style. <laughs> <laughs> that's <looks> great. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, man, oh, man. And uh, yeah. then, <laughs> what was the biggest, uh, besides his drawing, what was just, the, just, just the biggest you guys, challenge? I will put in the links uh, so you guys, the listeners, can follow um what we are laughing about right? <laughs> it looks it looks spectacular yeah it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's one question i had also that uh, supreme reminded me of is uh there is a very old trailer for thief but was not thief at the time it was the dark project and uh right. and uh josh randall shared it on a uh on a youtube account called the looking last vault 
And I was wondering mm -hmm. if that was your handiwork and Jen's as well. Uh, yes, I think that I believe uh, I I think that was initially a three D render. That uh, yeah, I'm look, let's say I'm looking at it right now. If I I'll let it play, the um, yeah, this is the the guy standing on holding the yeah. There we go. Right. Yeah. This. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm watching as I'm talking. That's what's going to stutter. I thought you watched it already. Oh, I, I, I did. I'm just uh, skipping through it again right now. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, this is, uh, I believe, a lot of Josh Randall's work. Josh Randall was uh, uh, my uh, sort of co-creator on the um, on the first set of cutscenes, and he edited them. And he was, um, you know, we we uh, co-directed for the um, uh, all the video stuff, and he was the he he was the guy who basically pulled the whole thing together. He was the producer on that and uh, uh, did a, an amazing job. And so this is part of that when we were first figuring out how to do the After Effects stuff. Um, the art itself is, I believe, Rob Waters, and uh, uh, who's awesome. And Rob went on to work uh, with uh, Ken Levine uh, and, uh, as part of uh, uh, System Shock, I believe, and uh, a couple of their great games. And uh, yeah, Rob was uh, the one who did all the initial Dark Camelot art. And so the uh, all the original designs were a little bit more Camelot friendly and more sort of like um, traditional fantasy, like if you're, you know, um, playing more uh, a Dungeons and Dragons-y kind of game. And uh, so you still see elements of those things. I'm not sure why the grappling hook disappeared. Uh, oh, yeah people talking about that yeah that was uh, one of the one of the questions i had is uh garrett used to have a grappling hook and also a crossbow on some promo material and right, both of these right. disappeared yeah I, yeah I can imagine it's from a gameplay perspective because it's easier to design a rope arrow yeah. uh, instead of like a claw that you swing up and we we know how it ended up in thief 4 so um <laughs> right and, and the rope arrows are such an iconic thing but maybe right. you can add more to well, it. There's a, there's a, yeah, I think that I, I believe you're right. Like it was probably a technological limitation, but stylistically the, the rope arrow is just cooler. Like as soon definitely as I, like way, way cooler. And, uh, and so like, yeah, it was just part of the stuff that got sort of flensed away um, from the, you know, like, you know, there's loads that like Thief has a very traditional backbone uh, stylistically, um, but it's good that we took away this the more you know uh, predictable elements like that and whether we took them away because of technological limitations like i think the the streamlining of stuff like that and making garrett more iconically just a this weird robed figure and stuff like that really um uh, played into the success of the the flavor um more than anything and i think uh, all, we we were talking about the mix of the thief you know like with the medieval but still a bit of magic and stuff like that i think um this gave the the designers of the game so the game designers uh, mm -hmm. way more freedom uh, doing things that that are actually pretty gamey but in the whole um, scenario they don't feel gamey because right. they make sense you know it could work yeah actually yeah. there is some magic there is some technology there is some stuff that shouldn't be there but it's there and it works so yeah, uh, absolutely like, like water arrows you know it's yeah. <laughs> think of it or the moss arrows it's <laughs> actually yeah, all right it's, it's again like if you would just read like yeah there's a guy running around and he's shooting torches with water arrows like what the uh, what, how does it even work exactly well, what how, did they yeah. smoke? how would that be po how could that be cool you know? yeah but, but i i just love the hand wave of all oh, their magical crystal crystals formed in bodies of water or fireplaces right. or high places right. and right. it just it, works it, it's the only it's one great. that it's takes great. advantage of them you know well the thing is I mean, like with the, all this stuff i think that all you have to do is you know imagine the way in which you can interpret it as cool and then people want to buy into it you know people want the moss arrow to work because the design element is fantastic and so you just have to like open like be, find the way put the spin on it so that it's acceptable you know and it doesn't break the flavor and like when i talk about like um josh randall is uh not only incredibly like <laughs> he's uh, he's an incredibly funny guy an incredibly talented guy um but he's really really um uh like when he knows something is working, 
he is excited to make it work, right? And um, with this early video, uh, I, rem I, I remember going through this process. Like once uh, he saw you know, what you know he and I could pull off with the animations, like he pushed super hard to make this the way that we go. Mm -hmm. Tirelessly to like uh, sell people on this vibe, and uh, and without him, like it, I don't think anything would have come together, you know. And like he was, he was the biggest booster of this stuff. And uh, you know, uh, with him and like Greg Piccolo, who's the uh, project lead, really amazing, amazing guy, a very kind guy. And uh, and like once those guys were convinced, like Greg understood that this was, you know. This is what was going to sell. This is what would, that people would get this as a, as a, as a dark dream like idea, you know. And then all the gameplay would flow naturally. And uh, and having people, especially because I came from nowhere, man. Like I was, I was like a nobody. And to have these dudes um, uh, believe in what I was talking about and to co-create this stuff with them, uh, like most people don't get that chance in their whole life. And uh, so I'm very, very thankful to them for that. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah definitely. Then, uh, a question about uh, Garrett uh, while we're here. Uh, how intentional was that the fact that um, Garrett is not seen in game? You can barely see him on a cover. Mm -hmm. So did there were there was is there any res resistance from the publisher for this? So no, not that I remember. No, huh? no, they were pretty they were pretty easy going about that stuff. Like I think they uh, again. I think that's you know that's. Uh, Greg's work. That's Josh's work. Um, it's amazing. And, yeah. and yeah, like getting, you know, getting the publisher to, you know, to, to buy into this thing is something that was new. And uh, and you know, um, like Paul Norath, the owner of the company, uh, like you know, Paul Paul comes from a man, Paul's a really cool dude, and he, he comes from a very traditional uh, gaming background, you know, the Ultima world, right? Um, and uh, that he was open to this weird new idea it was like if he hadn't said yes we would it wouldn't have happened so those are the guys that made that who really sold it to the the money people and uh and it's like it's like in in movies you know uh independent film didn't really happen until um you know uh steven soderbergh made sex life and videotape right there there was independent film like it did exist in the 70s and 80s and stuff 60s um but it wasn't until uh someone really had the guts to back an artist like that and because they did uh indie film exploded you know and then throughout the 90s you have mm -hmm. Quentin Tarantino and everybody else you know uh joining that and i think that that is even if looking glass you know was a victim of the times um it's the people that had the, the the sense of risk on art uh, that were in the position to say yes, that those are the guys to thank and those are the women to thank to, that made it happen. Yeah, but it also harkens back to Ultima Underworld, which was also a very, very risky project from uh, mm -hmm. all the stuff that I read about it. And because uh, uh, the rendering was cutting edge at the time, there was sure. nothing like it. And yep. uh, people in Looking Glass weren't sure exactly if it was going to work or not. And then I, I remember reading that uh, Paul Neurath brought in Warren Spector, who mm -hmm. then managed to sell it to... Oh, uh, yeah. I don't remember who published Ultimate World, but anyway, yeah. So that was... I'm not very surprised that Paul Neurath accepted the idea. Origin Systems. Or, yeah, or, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And, man, and Warren's... Like, Warren's a really... A uh, really sweet guy, and uh, and a very enthusiastic guy, and like he knows, like he knows he knows greatness when he sees it, and uh, and uh, like yeah, it doesn't surprise me that that's the that's the mechanism of how that happened. Like the, the, these are really like these are really visionary people. And, so you want uh, Warren Spector? Yeah, Warren Spector. Yeah, okay. you know, yeah. Like like these are like uh, like it's one thing to you know it's one thing to be a single artist with some good ideas. Uh, but it's another thing to uh, work with people that can really make that happen, you know, in a big way. And uh, and Paul and Warren and you know like Ned Larner and all those guys just it's uh, that's what the, that was the that was the reason it could happen is they protected all, all the rest of us. Awesome. Um, 
I, I I missed that question. It's from uh from a user. Uh, it would have fitted earlier. Sorry, um, I overlooked that. But you were uh you were talking about the after effects uh, that you were getting used to or started learning back in the days. Um, and it's Andy Durden. Um, mm -hmm. and he asked, uh, how much influence did the newly released Windows version of After Effects have on the stylistic choices of the Thief cutscene? <laughs> I am going to say a lot. You know, like it's when I started working at uh, uh, when I started working at Looking Glass, and I first started painting in Photoshop. Like Photoshop was, I think it started with layers. Like they added layers as a mechanism in three one, and I was painting in. Uh, uh, an addition prior to that uh, to start with. So there were, I, when layers came out, I was like, this is so confusing. You know, and I was <laughs> complaining about it. Um, but obviously, layers are the root of why After Effects works. And the, uh, like, when it became a real uh, usable functional program like that, like, it was mind blowing. Could you maybe yeah. explain what the layers do? Just. Yeah, sort? like. Um, yeah, the uh, like layers in Photoshop and After Effects are work I identically, right? And so, like uh, After Effects is Photoshop over time, and uh, so you can keyframe what your layers do and how they interact with one another, and uh, and so it is very much like an old school um, uh, visual effects technique um, uh, from both animation and from matte painting, which is glass painting. And uh, where you would paint, uh, and you can see this in very old movies, like uh, if you watch King Kong and stuff like that, like you paint on glass and you paint in reverse, right? So you'd paint on the back of a piece of glass and then you'd paint it over with sort of a white backing to make sure that the, uh, the painting wasn't see-through. And then you'd put that in front of the camera, right? And the camera would shoot through that thing. And then you paint on another piece of glass. Say if you did like, you know, like trees on one level and then more trees in the next level with some foliage and whatnot. Then if you move those pieces of glass or you move the camera in relation to those pieces of glass, then they parallax correctly and it looks like a dimensional visual effect. And so you could have, instead of standard matte paintings or standard backgrounds, um, you could integrate these complex um, moving paintings. And After Effects is essentially the digital uh, ification of that. Didn't Disney have this box uh, where they had the different layers on the glasses and they moved them in different um, yes. speeds? Yep. So that yep. uh, like you had the forest um, and then the, the trees in the front, they moved faster in front yeah, of the camera. And than it's the a background. tremendous effect. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. And in fact, you can see uh, old animations of, I think it's like there's an old Popeye animation where it looks like it's a 3D rendering. Like it's, it's oh, really... Oh, yeah. Really, yeah, it's so stunning. recently... The one yeah. with the cave? Yeah, it's really, it's stunning. It's really stunning. And so, like, once that became available to us, uh, like, a bit, you know, like, Josh and I working out how to, like, how this could function, like, it, I was just like, holy smokes, you can do anything with this program. And, it, like, and, and I still, you know, I still animate in After Effects today, like, for personal stuff. You... And, and, it, and, it's, and it's hugely used in, like, television-level visual effects. It's a, it's a giant triumph. It all works the same way. Nothing's really changed, but it's, it's basically a, a stacked layer. Uh, so in, at the end, it's like putting a picture into a Word uh, uh, file and saying it's behind or in front of the text. Just simple set. Yep. <laughs> for, yep. ba for basically so. <laughs> basically so. I mean, it's because when you look at when you when you start doing more uh, complex effects, like uh, when if you're you know doing working on um, you know uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine or something like this, um, the uh, like then you're using a program called Nuke for compositing, and compositing is much more nodal. Meaning, like you're looking at, like if you look at a nuke uh, layout for how a picture looks, if you're working on the Avengers, like it looks like a very complex nodal program, and it produces an amazing effect. But you really have to be very savvy at how programming works in order to understand the functionality. With After Effects, you can just pick this stuff up, like it makes sense in a really artistic way. And uh, and I really, if anyone's interested in doing this stuff, like that's listening, get after effects uh, or get the student version of the uh, adobe suite and use after effects and you can start making animations that look amazing instantaneously 
And it's awesome. It's incredibly satisfying. Great, great, great program. But it's very expensive. I don't know. Students version, how much would Student that version be? is not so bad. Now I think you can get and you get access to like all these other programs, all these other Adobe programs, uh, relatively cheaply. On the professional level, like I have to for an individual license, I'm paying, I think, fifty or sixty dollars a month. Um, so even then it's not it's not really backbreakingly expensive. But and I get it, you know, access to all of the entire yeah, suite. We you know, it's not that we had a crisis or something, so uh, so people go out and buy After Effects. <laughs> oh, it's so good. And one of the things I really, I really do push this because, like, I'm, I think, as excited as I am about indie games and indie film, like, I think that the next thing in this sort of, you know, COVID nineteen entertainment world is like, if you're making stuff like this, like, make it yourself for YouTube. Don't wait for anybody else to give you permission to make things. Because like the situation we were in with Thief was very unique, where we had extremely creative people who had the money to protect us to let us do this. You don't even need that anymore. You know, you can just do this stuff yourself at home at your desk and do it better than we ever did. And that's, and that's what I said when we had the pre-talk uh, before we started recording, like the trailer for Black Parade. Um, yeah, it's amazing that, uh, or maybe even I said it in the episode. I don't remember, but. Um, you can do that at home now, what you guys did 25 years ago, yes. you know, uh, so the whole yeah. company to do that before. Now you can literally do it yourself. <laughs> it's so exciting. It's so yeah. Exciting. You, you know, from, from mocap was recorded by fire mage and his brother in a, like a garage or something. And then our cutscene artists just cut them up and implemented it in the cutscene. <laughs> oh, it's great. And like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, um, how unreal works. Um, but you can, you can do all this stuff in Unreal now, and Unreal oh, yeah. is free. You know, oh, that's Unreal interesting. Is, yeah, like uh, you can you can download Unreal for free. You can download, um, gosh, like all the like the mega the mega textures they use for free. Uh, you can publish this stuff for free. You can make your own game for free as long as it doesn't free. hit a specific thing, right? Or like when you um, sell it. Yeah, you like there's an agreement that you like you choose from one of three agreements, I think. And so like if you're just an individual who's making individual art or making little movies or making little games for yourself or whatever it is, then uh it's completely free. If you're a small studio, it's you know, maybe a couple thousand dollars. And if you're a big studio, then it's a lot of money. Um, but that's how they make their money. Like they don't want to shut people out of being creative and they want people to use their material. Yeah, and, and I think it's always a, always like a promotion for them, you know. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's amazing. I didn't know that you can do all those stuff as well. But the engines today, so we're talking about Unreal Engine. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it's okay. That's a cool info. Uh, I would. Oh, it's that. it's terrific. And I think that like when you look at because, you know, they when you work in Unreal, you uh, make the game in the same uh, engine that you're like you when you film a cutscene in Unreal, you're still working in the game that's been designed. You know, and you're just interacting with it in a slightly different way. Speaking but of what, design, sorry to oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so finish, please finish <laughs> sorry, your yeah. sentence. Oh, was, I was just going to say that, like, that interacts with what I do now, which is like when I was working on Mandalorian, like, they use, I, I think they're using Unreal, but they use a video game engine to make their yeah. backgrounds. And yeah. it's interactive with the actors as you're shooting. You know, uh, so all this yeah. stuff is merging together. It's really stunning. Yeah, that's very fascinating. To, to yep. know this because if you if you just watch it you don't you don't feel like it but being aware of it it's wow it's crazy yeah yeah it's really really it's really startling and so when i think when i look at games you know today like the crossover between games and streaming movies and all this stuff is going to become very very intense because you're basically already building the assets that you can use to make the films, but I, I, I recently watched a, uh, a German independent film that takes place in space. It's called Cargo, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I read about it. And uh, all the space scenery and some of the very big establishing shots of the ship were made with Unity. And if you yeah. have a Kina, you can actually see the logo of Unity. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. Yeah, yeah. Unity is the other big one, exactly. And uh, and like I really love that the because the stuff that we were doing. At, at Looking Glass, you know, like that's like it's lucky that we all came together in the, at that moment in that project for that creativity to flourish. Um, but you know, today you don't even need that. That can just be your friends. You can just get together with your friends and make something that's even better. 
speaking of um <laughs> <laughs> sorry i really i'm so no, it's cool. It's cool. into that stuff uh, people people love to hear that but i i just uh, need, you know i don't want to um over go the the questions people oh, sure. Absolutely. so Absolutely. uh let's go a bit back to thief um and there is a question from Tefercat from Twitter. Um, mm. I would love to hear what they have to say. So I think it's you. Um, what you have to say about the architecture of Thief? What are the inspirations for the city and how it changed from one game to another? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, this is a much better question for Mark Lazar. Uh, like, all Sorry, the... he left. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but Mark's a... Mark's... Mark's awesome, a really, really sweet dude, and he is he is now doing uh, I may be wrong. he was uh um doing the Lord of the Rings uh games um and uh, doing terrific looking stuff for that um but yeah, his like he was coming from very like he wanted to make it um like really inspired by real like real design and historical design, and so I believe we we're looking at stuff from um from Bruges and from you know, like like really period appropriate architecture and trying to mimic that as best we could in some very simple, you know, polygon styles. But um, but that those tight knit streets and that very um, you know maze like uh, 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 style of old um, you know old European cities. Um, like he had. I think. It yeah, sorry. I just want. I think uh, I read somewhere that he went on a trip to um, Prague. In Europe. Yes, yeah. He yep, took photos right. and yeah. Yep, and it, yeah, that's uh, that's correct. And he's yeah, he like that was just his you know his whole cube was that stuff. Oh, and, Prague is uh, of course a very interesting um, source uh, for 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 a me medieval looking city. Uh, mm -hmm. That's I didn't know that. Um, but it's interesting because uh, bouncing off of Prague, because we have one user on TTLG who pretty much goes back to these textures and wants to know where they come from so he can have some higher resolutions that we can use for uh, HD packs, basically. And uh, <laughs> right, right, he, right. he found a lot of them, most of them from Prague, but some from That's New great. York City on the, some other areas that are pretty interesting. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's great. Yeah. But I, I yeah. don't understand because the textures are really high resoluted as shown in the trailer. So I don't know. They are amazing. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. But, but that's great. Who, who's the user? I think it's uh, Purgator. Hang on. Let me see. Ah, Purgator. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He, he, he's, a, he's a thief nerd. Um, oh, him. yeah. <laughs> He knows a lot and asks a lot, and yeah, great guy. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, I want to apologize. Him. My memory is faulty on any of this stuff. It, it, you know, like I haven't been in the thief world for uh, quite some time, and uh, I remember things much more emotionally than literally. Uh, but uh, it is a very important time in my life, and it's really exciting to talk about it again. Welcome back to the fool. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So um, I do have uh, one question for you, Dan. Um, so for uh, Deadly Shadows, uh, your company still produced the uh, the cinematics that were really amazing right. as always. And I know that you had scheduling and money issues, so not all of them could be done. So that's why right. they use in-game cutscenes. But my question is, what happened to the uh, in-game briefings? Uh, yeah, like, uh, that was all, yeah, it was all, uh, it was all part of that same issue, you know, and I think that, like, the, it's the, uh, you know, we, like, I, because I actually think that the, some of the best stuff, you know, that, that, uh, that, for just speaking from my, my own contribution, some of the best looking stuff that I did, um, was for Thief 3, and I'm really, really proud of the, um, the look of those, those cutscenes, um, and it was it's too bad that you know like all sorts of you know businessy stuff got in the way of uh of of completing things the way we really wanted to complete them but like overall i think it it worked out really well um the mission briefings i don't um specifically remember uh what happened in you know the decision making process um but uh, you know it's at a certain point you know there's just not enough money to cover um, what what needs to be done? You know, schedules have been rearranged, and 
uh, and it just gets too tricky to organize. And so there's uh, there's stuff that just fell by the wayside, and uh, and it's too bad. But I think that the the overall effect and like generally, I know that they had. I didn't I didn't know very I didn't know very much about the production half of Thief Three in terms of making the game, um, but uh, the game itself for the struggles they had to make it like turned out great. Oh yeah, and, yeah. and I was uh, I was uh, I hadn't gotten to, I I didn't catch up with it until recently. Uh, I actually uh, but I think really really startled by how good that game is. I actually think Thief 3 had the best story in my opinion. Yes, I agree. Uh, and uh, but with the missing cutscenes that was a stupid decision because it's the first thing you do as a thief fan. You know, I bought the game on the first day. I, I you know, mm -hmm. I pre-ordered it. I bought it got home in rain with my bike um and installed it and then you start the game and then you get the just that text and, and and that was my first reaction like what is going on here yeah what, um, what it this? was totally right. missing and then with that ugly 3d menu that was really not cool and right. yeah it, it's yeah it's sad of course it uh, it's a decision but yeah i, I would have loved to uh, you know um do you know if there's like some work around somewhere to find i don't i don't really i mean i think that yeah like i, I think that uh i i going over the like rewatching all of that work i was like man oh man like it, it was such a it was a it was a it was a it was a stressful few years for a lot of people uh both in our companies and the industry and stuff like that and uh but going over it at a distance and looking at like all the material i was like this stuff is really really great and really inspired Uh, and it's too bad that it's a little rugged, like you said in the in the beginning. Um, but uh, ultimately, all the great stuff really shines shines through. Um, yeah, the great great design, great like the whole like the city build out they did is amazing. Like I was just like the the story is great, everything is great about that. Stuff. So I was I was happy to to sort of uh, finish that in my mind. Uh, yeah, come to an emotional conclusion with that project, and. Uh, And for whatever, for like I was, you know, turns out I'm, you know, not great at running companies, so I, I want to take my my fair share of the blame for that happening. Um, but I'm very, very proud of the work we did, and I'm really impressed by the work that they did. So that basically um, answered one question from Beuchlein, uh, if I pronounce it in German, that's how you pronounce it, uh, Beuchlein, you might say, because he asked like, uh, uh, um, if you played. Uh, how, how would you compare like Thief One, Two, and Three, um, and how important are these games for you today? Um, so yeah, you just said it. So uh, hopefully, Boyland that answers that. But he also asked two things: if you did play or see Thief Four, and oh, yeah. What, are, yeah. what are your thoughts on that? I, uh, I I played a little bit of it, and uh, I watched a bunch of uh, playthroughs of it in the past. Uh, a uh, few days and like i gotta say like there's like i know that the industry view of it is uh, or at least the, the fan reaction was fairly negative um but I, i would i would rather talk about what's great in that thing and it's like they really did a a great job of like uh sort of like expanding on the detail that made up that world And like uh like the sets and the and the style in which they brought them together, I was I was was really really impressed by it. Uh, I think that there's some like I think the the core like I I didn't play it, so I can't say that whether I enjoyed the game or not. But Don't like the it. thing, yeah, I, I, I understand people are you know people have their feelings about it. But it's like the the stuff that they did right was great, and the uh, and I think that the <laughs> what. Like no no I mean I mean that no I mean that I, I mean that to separate out the stuff that I'm about to talk to talk about which is like the stuff that that doesn't work if I were to talk about it generally from just looking at it is that the reason why to me the original Thief worked so well is that it was made by a simulation company and uh, Thief Thief's gameplay comes uh, comes up out of the experience of the game is trying to continuously make its world and you are trying to interact with that world it doesn't have a thing that you like the game isn't waiting for you to tell its story by going through certain trigger points you know yeah, that, is, like, that is very true 
and the the like yeah. and it's the like thief you know the experience of thief and this goes back to what we were saying earlier the initial experience of thief the user the player is complicit in designing it like how you break into a place is yours you know like they've set up an obstacle course but you don't have to go through it you can try and find other ways around it you know, That's very it, interesting with the sorry for with what you said with the simulation company because my favorite PC gaming magazine back in the days they called it the breaking in simulator. Yes, right, exactly. It's exactly. kind of like that, yeah. And, and you can see that, that that route is actually that's a very interesting point of view. Uh, yeah, it's, thank it's, you. It's, it's an emergent it's an emergent gameplay, and that's what makes it great. And the and what I saw of and what I played of Thief Four. Uh, what made it uh, less interesting to play is because isn't because of problems in their design. It's just that AAA games have become very uh, like non non simulating. You know, like you are you That's just have strange. to get to a yeah, like you have to go and press a button to get to the next next place to press another button, and uh, and so it's a it's a commonality between all AAA games, and I think it's a little it's unfair to hammer on the thief four guys for bad design when everybody is making that mistake yeah it's it's, it's a very it's it's very much a product of its time i would, I would yes. say it is right. very 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 2014 but then <laughs> right. you have yeah, exactly. but then you have dishonored you know and yeah I think which i love I'm, I'm a huge friend yeah especially the... showed that uh, especially in the second game i think mm -hmm. they showed like uh, how much is possible you know just uh, you know, you remember that that um, level where you can change all the rooms, and I, and and you have so many possibilities to to, right. to interact with the world and, and 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 finish the mission your way. And I think Dishonored um, kept on with that. I think Arcane Studios, you know, um, they they with Prey as well. Uh, yeah. they, they breathe that and they they have so many easter eggs you know um, oh yeah there's very you, a lot of looking glass easter eggs the yeah, looking really... glass right yeah. and, and uh, shipping the, uh, and receiving shock, okay, yeah, all that stuff yeah it's really funny <laughs> but, but, yeah. but back to what Dan was saying Arcane is a very is a, is a studio that is centered around simulation like the first game Mark Totalis is virtually Ultima World 3 and there's a lot of simulation elements in it so it's not surprising that the partnered and 2 and Prey are just similar in vain and are very different from FIFA 2014. Yeah, and they I have think the true success like, to, to Looking Glass, I guess. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I, like, a, yeah, like the Dishonored is like that is this, uh, like it's Dishonored to me feels like, and I mean this absolutely complimentary. Like I love Dishonored, and I love love Dishonored too. Like loved it, and like that is the strongest candidate to me for the evolution of where thief would have gone you know like artistically and storytelling wise like they did that it's such a real and and involving deep world uh, and it's so much fun like everything that i saw was so much fun um i think that it doesn't have quite the the sinister uh dreamy griminess that thief has and that's more evoked by gloomwood um but like the if you're going to make thief a triple a title make it dishonored like that's how to do that and it's they have really Stephen thrilling. russell as the voice yeah it's tremendous. Uh, which yeah. was amazing oh, and, because he yeah, he's, and, he's and Austin older now. and terry brogius and you know like as as writers and like you know uh like they 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 understand like what made you know what what made looking glass work you know bring steven back on and all that stuff like there's a like the reason why to get him is not as a um as a sort of a, a nostalgic nod it's because he's great mm -hmm. you know and uh the reason why you bring terry brocious in to write for you or austin grossman you know is because they're great <laughs> you know it's not like they were oh we'll bring them in because they were great way back in the day like they're great right now you know yeah. and it, uh go ahead yeah, the world of Dishonored is so, so fleshed out. It is really fascinating to read all of the journals and uh, yeah. all, of, all of the books Brilliant. that lay around that tell of a world. And it's like usually these books are not badly written, but in other games are like, eh, okay, I'm not super invested. Yeah, it's just sort of whatever. But, but they, have they, all, also, they also have chosen a specific art style, which today they can even, uh, you know, represent in the game graphics. 
yeah. um, you know, that is, you know, that totally makes the package a whole. You know, yes, and this is, this is something that Dan was talking about before with the, uh, the uh, uh, like the rush to photorealistic graphics and uh, the uh, the art director of, of Arcane, who's called uh, Sebastian Miton, said that yep. um, it's better to go after a very specific art direction that stays, even if the uh, technology isn't quite there, rather Absolutely. than and try to go for a photorealistic style that ages as as yeah. um, at ages as um, as the graphics evolve as well. Exactly, what, you exactly. can play Monkey Island three today. Right. Uh, because it's you know it's 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 a it still looks good uh, and yeah, and, and still you cool. can play some other games from the nineties uh, where everything like Simon the Sorcerer three D or whatever uh, looks disgusting today yeah yeah well because I mean because great art's great art you know it yeah. doesn't matter if you're doing it at like a uh, you know an eight bit pixel level or at a you know fully rendered whatever because like you look at uh, you know like the stuff for uh, like everything that Irrational did you know like Nate Wells uh, work on the uh, on the Bioshock series, you know, he's our, uh, did all the art for that. Nate, Nate started at uh, uh, a Looking Glass. He played one of the keepers, and he's since gone on to do, you know, just stunning, stunning art design. Uh, and he's really, you know, like I looked at Nate's art back then, and it was really weird. Like it was really weird, and uh, that was what was exciting to us. You know, like he was bringing stuff to the table that was just like, I don't know if anyone's gonna like that, but I like it. Yeah. <laughs> but I know a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people complain today about uh, how how chunky Thief looks. Looks like the polygons. You can see the polygons and the characters. Sure. But uh, for me, that's the charm for it. I mean, yeah. the fact that they like they they stylized and you can you can see more. You know. Oh yeah. All the, the architecture and everything. And you have to admit for one thing. Um, I think that's why Thief never worked again that mm -hmm. way because. The limitations and the straight gameplay, because you know, with all those boxy uh, buildings and stuff, but it was adding to the gameplay because, because you had the clear lines, you knew where you could go, where you could grab, where you could jump, whatever. Uh, and I think no matter who would work on a thief game today, even if it would be the original crew, I, I'm pretty sure, with the you know, if they would try to bring that feeling into a modern thief mm -hmm. game, I, I think it wouldn't work. Just because of the technology we have today, um, that is my opinion. Because I think we, you can never get this feeling back. Uh, well, it was certainly—I agree that it was certainly like it was just the right moment for this stuff to work, and it's hard to recapture that. Like, I, you can't recapture it by doing the exact same thing again, right? Like, even with Gloomwood, like Gloomwood isn't Thief, but it accomplishes the same it's kind even of thing. Clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, well, it's so nasty. It's I mean, it, it, and I mean that is like in a in a good way. Like I was like I was spooked out playing that game. It was so much. It was just great, right? Um, but it's it it's things a, in the sewers. Uh, I, I oh yeah, the oh, man. hunched over. Yes, yeah, so fantastic, fantastic. But then, um, yeah, but, yeah. They, but it's basically using new techniques to do the things that Thief did. And I think that's what you have to do. Like you don't want to just repeat Thief. Like that's thief's already been done. Like you, that, that you game want... is designed. Gloomwood has a straight design decision. You know, you, yep. yes, I think the enemies with the hats, I, I think they look really ugly, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> but, right, right, right. And you can see straight where they're looking with that gloomy shine out of their yeah, eyes. Out of your eyes. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. That, that that is a decision. You know, that yes. is not they trying to, to recreate right. something or whatever. Right. It's it's the decision to be unique. Like um, I was excited about seeing the shine out of the eyes as I was when I first saw the exclamation points appear over people's heads. Uh, <laughs> I, it, I, playing, you know, got, you know, the old uh, the classic stealth game with Snake there. You know, like with the first time you see like the uh, the exclamation point appear, you're like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And, I, and it's such a uh, it's so bold to do this stuff. And like yeah. that's the that's the exciting part. You know, because I oh, go ahead. No, no, go on. Sorry, I can. No, I, I, I was. Yeah, no, I, I think that, like, that's the, because, uh, like, I, I also do this podcast about movies with uh, a couple of friends of mine, uh, Martini Giant, it's called, if everyone's interested. Um, we, uh, we would, I uh, would have named it at the end, so. Oh, that's okay. The, uh, but the one of the main things we talk about in Martini Giant is that we all hate nostalgia. Like, I don't like nostalgia. I think nostalgia is poison, right? Like, I love old movies. But I don't love old movies because they're old. I love them because they're good. 
you know, and I don't love old games because they're old. And there's like, oh, it reminds me of when I was a kid. You know, I love them because when I play them now, they're still good. You know, and I think that, that that's the, when I look back at Thief and I was replaying them, I was like, if this came out today, just the way it is, like this was just some rando indie game, I'd be like, I, I, I'm obsessed with this thing. Like, that's how I'd react to it. And that's the way we should look at all this stuff. Like, and that's don't... why there are still people coming to the community. Because right. um, if they can, you know, go over that, uh, it looks yeah, not so good. But uh, they can, they they jump into that and then they get the gameplay and they get the feeling. Um, another example that totally um, uh, goes with your uh, with your um, theory, um, I, I loved Spaceballs as a child. <laughs> of course, and yes. then a friend from Berlin was visiting me and he was like, hey, uh, it was years ago. And he was like, hey, I just bought uh, Spaceballs on DVD. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, yeah, bring it with you. And and then we were sitting down. We had popcorn and chips and everything. And after 10 minutes, we, sh we stopped the movie because we were like, this it's totally destroys our childhood <laughs> it's memory. <a> <laughs> movie. <laughs> it's a terrible movie. It's true. I mean, it's, Young Frankenstein is a brilliant movie, but Spaceballs is a bad movie. What are you going to do? It's not a bad movie. And I think for that time, it wasn't a bad movie, but it's sure. a humor thing. And humor, yeah. of course, it has iconic uh, uh moments but right. um yeah you know that totally underlines uh what you were just saying like yeah. uh, nostalgia is can really fog your memories yes. um so yes. you can leave it as it is in your memory right. and then it's great or you can go through it and see if it really holds up today or not right right and i and i feel that that's the like the thing that really makes things last right is uh is the quality which with which they are done not the mechanism with which they're done like the good like high end graphics cards don't make great art you know yeah. uh and and good like there's no substitute for great design you look like you look at like one of the like uh Randy Smith who is the uh, uh head designer on Thief 3 and uh uh like he is a terrific like one of the greatest designers i've ever seen And now, and when he works in uh, simulating, you know, uh, realistic stuff like Thief, or whether he's making really abstract stuff like he does for uh, Tiger Style, you know, like he knows that you're there to play, uh, to have a to have a, a weird new experience. Like he's not trying to repeat himself, you know. And uh, and the stuff for Thief and the, and the people who designed the levels for Thief, like that was cutting edge, new, wild ideas. Right, and uh, and if you remade Thief today, you can't just copy those things. Like you have to do what is fascinating to you right now. Yeah, and um, and that's that's what that's what makes new great games, and that's why AAA AAA games are boring. They're nostalgia for themselves. Um, speaking of those things, um, did you play the or did you see? Are you aware of the dark mod? No. Okay, so um, that is a. Thief gameplay mod for the Doom 3 engine. Now it's mm -hmm. uh, uh, now it is totally uh, how do you call it, Skeki? Uh, standalone. Yeah, they they can use the source code freely, um, and uh, they created um, uh, yeah uh, um, total conversion. That's the word I was looking for. Um, they created total conversion an editor uh, where you can create uh, thief style games or missions uh, in the Doom 3 engine. Oh, which, it's great. Yeah, and I personally really love it because um, it did some, um, you know, it, it 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 didn't totally invent the whole thing new, but it added um, mechanics that are more modern. Because, for right. example, the climbing is way more intuitive. Maybe right. too easy if you look at a realistic, but you you know you jump at a ledge, and in ninety percent he will grab it and uh, pull himself onto that ledge, and. Right. And and the guards are more a bit more realistic, you know. They are not as easy to um, to, to, to yeah, you know. In Thief One and Two, after a while, you know how the guards work. Yeah, you know they're going to operate. Yeah, and, I mean, and, I, I still compliment the the AI design. I think it's Tom Leonard like the dead stuff. It's like it's really great for that. Like Tom, that time, yeah, incredible, incredible AI guy, and like the uh, and you can see it like yeah, the stuff that he did later is 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 insane, you know. And like at the time, it was it was incredible, but now when you play it, you're like, man, these guys are pretty dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. 
<laughs> but but, but is, the, we love them because the when they, but that actually I think that totally suits the characters you guys have given them. Um, <laughs> with yeah, the, exactly. The right, we're playing them out. <laughs> you it's know like, what's I, interesting? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the I guards just want their paycheck and they don't care about anything. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, like yeah, those guards are. It's like when people talk about like the boring life of stormtroopers on the Death Star. Like that's how, that's what those guards are like. You're just yeah. like <laughs> just sitting around like oh god. Waiting for Darth Vader to get his shit together on this is really, really terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Bafford. Yeah, I love it. I'm lo I'm watching the video for um uh the dark mod right now. It looks great. I yeah, love it's, it's very broken good. glass videos. It's very it's very charming. I love this. I think the engine actually was a good choice because um back in the days Doom 3 was about, much about lighting and shadows. Yep. Yep. And this engine really works great. And and what I love to see is that um yeah, speaking of a you know art uh, perspective, the the atmosphere with the lights, for example, then there is a little um, fireplace, and you can open the the lid, and when you open the lid, the shadows are different on the wall, you know, to that. And uh, I think they already did it in Thief Three. I think they they were very proud. And I, I remember a promotion video um, when they had that real life shadow when there is like a ventilation thing and there's light behind it and it drops the shadow to the wall and then Garrett goes through it and then you can also see the shadow. Uh, yeah, 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 they've yeah. been very proud uh, of that. Um, That's exciting. And and yeah, it, it actually worked. You know, that was the next step for Thief, and I think uh, in Thief Three. Uh, but you could also see the transition from more realistic looking graphics and losing some of the atmosphere because suddenly everything was more gray and stony. Right. Right. What, what I really liked, and so we maybe I, I can get jump back to the art design. Um, what also was really amazing, and I started to appreciate that after years of playing Thief, that those different textures like they had different colorization mm -hmm. uh you know you had some red and some green and yeah sometimes it looks disgusting from today's perspective but it added a lot of atmosphere and orientation as well because Absolutely. some of the levels are so complex um yep. that those different uh textures add you know ah this is this ah that is that building or that is that wall i remember that um that really adds um do you um was that a decision because i could imagine like when you would just would have gray walls in those blocky mm -hmm. engine uh it would totally be disorientating after right. a while uh, was that the decision more of a gameplay or was it more of an artistic choice or maybe a good mix because i can imagine what you told us that both works together but yeah, uh, absolutely because it's it, it really is the it's each influencing each you know it's like the uh, when designers you know it's like you know uh when designers realize uh art as a tool they're going to it's going to make their design even better you know and when an artists are are inspired by design then they're going to come up with cooler looking things and so like when you're playing because i like uh yeah you play through um uh, you know like the uh uh the cathedral and thief right like like it's such a complex uh area that without having a tonal difference between these sections like it would be impossible to find your way around um but they create these uh the the designers use the the palette created by uh mark uh and shaping shaping these things with mark so that everything becomes iconic and it becomes its own marker very subtly you know and it, and it makes the game work better so yeah all these things are like it that's the cross-pollination element of it and i hmm. think that the like with you know because you, you look at something like t4 like it felt very much like the art team and the design team were two separate things and the because the art's great and it's incredibly well rendered and the design by itself is is good and interesting um but there's not a lot of like there's not a lot of um interaction um between these elements and it so it becomes a little repetitive from what i what yeah. I, from what i played you know and uh, because they're just using you know like oh we need more 
these things are you know, like uh you know more boxes over here blah 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 and it just becomes part of the tool the, like part part of a uh, uh a way to fill out a world because they need it to be dense because the graphics are so complicated now as opposed to you know uh mark saying i would like the graveyard to look like this and showing that to the designers and the designers being like oh if we do this then this would be a really cool aspect of gameplay you know that's why you end up with a great game and uh and and, and the thing is i think it's true like because if you look at with you know like with what you said about the guards is like you know you know tom leonard's a freaking genius and he understands um when things are you know pushing the limitations of what can be done right and uh working uh, with the rest of the team to make it all make sense. What like you get to the limitation and you're like, how do we make this limitation part of what makes this great? You know, yeah. uh, and that's what makes that's what uh, makes it stick in your mind forever. People remember the like. There's everybody knows the feeling of like you, you know, uh, like you've managed to stealthily sneak into this thing for 45 minutes, and then because you you drop a plate or something like you accidentally pick up a plate and you let go and it goes clang. Right? Oh and yeah. Two minutes or, later. Or that box in the first level of effort. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. I was, I was going to mention it. Right. And like, and uh, you know, but and, and 30 seconds later you have this conga line of guards that are chasing you, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And like, now those are like, those are things that come out of uh, limitations in, uh, in, in what the, what the, uh, what technologically we could do. Right, but it's not re it's not remembered as a negative experience. Like everyone has an experience, and it's really fun. Like because yeah. uh, we work together to make it work together. And you guys uh, are evil with this because, what, as Supreme said, there, there is the uh, vase in a in a footlocker in Batman's <laughs> basement that always totally. when you come always up catches the case. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and and in Thief Two, uh, the designer of Life of a Party and uh, eavesdropping loves to put hammers in. <laughs> oh, yeah. and, and you can hear the designer's giggle in the background. Yeah. <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh, it's so but, fun, man! It's so fun. Really, the sword. What really interests me is um, uh, because, of course, I think uh, that's pretty popular that um after thief one and many people complained about the very scary theme with the zombies mm -hmm. um the design process shifted to a more yeah um welcoming theme you know where, where sure. it's more more human but what i really found interesting because i love the art design of thief 2 with that mm -hmm. um Art Deco style. Oh, it's wonderful, man! Mark Ooh. really did himself with that stuff. It was incredible looking. Uh, incredible how, looking. When did you guys uh, you come up with the idea? Uh, was it like was the decision like okay for the next game we totally need something that uh, differentiates? What I also could think of is like okay, we still have that ugly engine, so we need to find a way to make things look more interesting or right. different. Um, and I could also mention that all those things came together as well. And I think <laughs> I'm pretty sure you will agree. Or you will tell me, yes, it was like that. But uh, when, when did you come up with the idea of that art deco style and, and cre you know, when, what was it first? Okay. We have those mechanists idea. Yep. And like, how could we design that? Uh, yeah, I think that, that these things. Yeah, like I, I would say that uh, I got to give, like, especially the Art Deco credit, I have to give all to Mark. Um, like, uh, he is a bottomless well of information about uh, great old design. And I, it's one of my very favorite aspects, of the, especially when you get to, like, the bank. Like, oh, and yeah. you're like, this is a, like, suddenly the world feels much bigger and. Like you can tell the difference between like the the cruddy level, the poor broke level that Garrett's living at versus like how fancy the rich are living is amazing, right? And like and he represents that through art design, and it's uh you know which is essentially essentially the same thing that I was talking about with like the uh, the cathedral, you know, like you create these totally different environments that imply a story without a story having to be spoken out loud, and uh, and he was. You know, it's just phenomenal work uh, that he did with that. Um, he and I really agreed on the uh, sort of the the Baroque aspects of the uh, of the mechanists, 
and sort of like the the brass faces and all that stuff. And so we would um, we'd talk about it a lot and trade art. And then I would, I, I think I did one uh, sort of cutscene experiment and showed him some stuff. And that's how the like the robot design came together. Um, but it's like that was like I think Thief Thief Two it, Thief Two is also my favorite. Uh, it's my I think it's my favorite of the Thief games. Uh, there's stuff that I love in yes, the old Thief. I love you. Know, you. Like, I like I think that's the <laughs> like there, there's 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 there are elements to Thief One that I wish were in Thief Two and vice versa. But like stylistically and storytelling wise, I really am attracted to Thief Two. Because and... the thing is, like most guests we have are like, oh yeah, I'm more Thief One guy, and next yeah. and, and me, we are always like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, there's very, there's nothing bad I can say about Thief One. It's spectacular. Um, I would definitely say that Thief Two is more in my more in my wheelhouse, you know, st storytelling wise and stylistically. And I and like I had more, you know, uh, I was more involved in creating, helping create that story um, in Thief Two. So I. So it feels very personal to me as well. But so the... your name should be Daniel Truth. Um... <laughs> <laughs> like it's like, well, it's like the like Thief, Thief Two was uh, especially. Uh, I don't know what Mark would say about this, but uh, from my point of view, it's where the uh, like his world of uh, art directing the gameplay and my world of painting the cutscenes blended the best and were the most mutually inspiring. And uh, and I I think that we reached a real height at that point because like we were we were both like deeply influencing the story this way uh, we were part like we had like we were you know in, I think the work we were doing was inspiring to the designers the designers did work that inspired us and it was everything was working beautifully at that point and uh, uh, and yeah so the uh, the like I love the like the spookiness of the robots the creepiness of the robots um the uh like the little like the cherub robot that you oh yeah uh, that you find like that was you know that was just because we had painted this thing and they're like well we got to put this in the game somehow it's awesome it was so weird <laughs> i love it so weird you know and like that's the like that 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 freewheeling attitude towards it's great let's find a way to make this work uh it's just great Speaking of robots, there is one that uh, I really want to, to ask you if I can find the image. Ah, yeah, I know where you're going. So to. what what happened to this guy? <laughs> oh, look at that, dude. It. Look at that, dude. Oh, I, yeah, I, I absolutely like... love it. There, there was this uh, strategy game that came out with those uh, strange tank things uh, just recently. Maybe you guys heard of it. Uh, it looks like one of those uh, big uh, tanks. Uh, it's That's, a World uh, War II theme game with, uh, Mac in, with Max. Uh, right. And it looks like that. J just wanted to add that. Um, I, I, can't, I can't tell you if I even... I don't know if I painted this. I don't think I did. But it definitely has like that... The single offset eye is like one of my favorite design motifs. Because there is also this one, and uh, people have speculated that these were the precursors to the final robots that we have in the game that are very oh, different. Yeah. I definitely painted this one. The orange one, I definitely painted this. It looks uh, a bit like System Shock. It could have yeah. worked there as well. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm. That is. Uh, this is this continues to be my vibe today. I love this stuff. I love you, it. you also painted this one, which is very well. very nice. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's that's one of my favorites. I really like that. that and like, and then I like this is directly influenced from stuff that Mark had given me. Like I was as I was looking at portraiture that he was using as samples, and I was trying to find a way to express that in a you know, the mechanistic style. And that and this is a key painting in in making that happen. Yeah, that was a great one. I love that one. First yeah, it's one, so much uh, fun. It's the original Lord Buckethead or something. <laughs> exactly. And uh, um, Dominus painted a, uh, a poster for the 20th anniversary of Thief 2, and he used um, yeah. these guys all of here. Them. Yeah, all, pretty much all of them in, in the, uh, the poster, which is oh, very, so very good. Nice. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I'm very proud of those. Those are great. Yeah, that that robot man, like that is. Uh, I can tell I was, I was reading a lot of uh, uh, what was it? The there's a comic uh, that 
the the robot assassin or something like that. Like it has that same like rounded base, tall head shape uh, look. And uh, for like old school paper RPG people, uh, I co-wrote a game uh, that was published by the Vampire the Masquerade guys uh, called Whole Human Occupied Landfill. And one of the characters, it's very, it's a total comedy routine, but one of the characters looks almost exactly like this robot. He has exactly the same head, only he is a 10 year old boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's super, super fun. Oh, it's awesome. I love looking at these things again. I haven't seen this in a long time. Yeah, speaking we are of which, nerds, you know. That's so yeah, good, dude. Speak, speaking of which, do, um, do you still have them on some lost hard drive or somewhere? Oh, the the paintings? No, they're long yeah. gone. Yeah, that's all. Oh, man. Uh, sadly, those well, are all. The only place that exists is uh, scattered on the internet. Um, but it's it is great to see it. Like, they, yeah, there's some stuff that I. There are some paintings that never got used. Uh, that I was really proud of, but Looking Glass <laughs> collapsed so fast uh, that we just never never got him back, and it's really too bad. That was a that was a nightmare day, boy oh boy, I was so sad that day. So <laughs> there is one question I want to ask you uh, regarding Fifth Two, seeing as you were involved with the story as well. Um, there is a uh, I don't know if, if 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 it has been confirmed by anyone at Looking Glass, but people have been saying for years that. You guys created the missions first for Thief Two, and then wrote the story. Is it true? Uh, it's, uh, I'm I'm not exactly the one to ask on this, uh, but like I feel like uh, the, there was a lot there. Like after Thief, like everyone continued to work on designing stuff. So I think it's fair to say that like these things got uh, made in some way um, before uh, a story was wrapped around them. I think that I, I I can't say that for sure. Um, I, I wasn't a designer on it, but the I think that uh, there was a lot of at least rudimentary work that was already done that we were that we were working with and uh, and then and then and adapting to. But and it's been a while. So were you ever involved at any point with the uh, Thief to Gold project? Uh, no, no, I was not. Um, uh, and I, yeah, I, 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 like I was, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Thief Gold and I love the extra missions for Thief Gold. Um, but, uh, past Thief 2, I, that was the, that was the end of the line for me for Thief. Oh, what? <laughs> So I do have some more questions as well, if if that's fine with you, Supreme. I'm totally fine. I'm totally happy uh, having <laughs> you here. Um, it's okay, amazing, it's, you know. It's... So I can uh, you know arrange things in the background, you know, for the description, just for the listeners to know. I will link everything we talk about here, like links and pictures, uh, videos, um, uh, in the description of the episode. So uh, if you want to check that out, so yeah, it's amazing, Skeki. Great to have you here. Um, next psychosis, bye bye. You never no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, w one thing that I was looking at uh, also is um, on the uh, credits video for uh, the Dark Project in Gold. Uh, you are credited with drawing the maps for the game, and uh, I wanted to know um, if you drew them digitally or uh, on paper, and uh, also uh, when exactly did you draw them? during the uh, development cycle? Uh, it was later in the development cycle because all the maps are actually based on uh, screenshots out of Dromed. Um, and so I would take the, the designers, because the designers had ideas as to like how they, I mean, it's part of the game design, like how they want the map represented. So they wouldn't give away certain things, but it would show other things, right? And so we ended up with a process where they would essentially take sort of a, a sky shot of the structure um, uh, in Dromed, and which is just a gray field with box lines, right? And they would uh, sort of highlight what the shapes were. And then I would take that uh, directly as like a JPEG or whatever it was. And I'd bring that into, I believe, Painter, um, a Photoshop like program where it was, you know, simulated watercolor and stuff like that. Uh, and then I would paint it digitally on top of that and add a paper overlay texture to it. <laughs> but it's really cool. This is exactly what I've been doing lately for uh, our uh, our own campaign. 
Yeah, I, yeah. I actually have a, have a map to share. Hit it. This oh, is, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Love yeah, it. This is the latest I made. So good. Yeah. It's yeah, it's perfect, man. It's totally perfect. It's great. Oh, I love man. I love the the whole world that's implied by Thief is so fantastic. And I love that like <laughs> like it really feel like when you're in it, it feels totally real. And then when you're out of it, you're like, they don't even name the city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it's uh it all feels it feels very specific but very loose at the same time. And these maps are like the perfect representation of that. It's really, really great. That looks fantastic. I love it. Looks like it's an original thief uh, map. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean the the production quality from for the Black Parade, it's amazing. It's skyrocketing. Everything I've seen, man, that looks that looks absolutely terrific. And Thank you. Uh, you also did uh Endless Rain. Yes, that right? that's correct. Yeah, I uh, because I was watching a bunch of playthrough stuff on that, and I was going to say the architecture on that was was really really spectacular. Thank you. Nicely nicely put together. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to Black Parade. I'm definitely I'm definitely going to be playing that. That's gonna that's really wild. Wow, thanks. <laughs> no, that's awesome, dude. Oh, really psyched. Another red face I can hear. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know what you guys are embarrassed about. Like you guys are the ones who are doing the great thief work right now. I'm like I'm just psyched that it's that it's going. You know, I'm just like <laughs> yeah. I'm just, you, uh, you, I'm no, the, I get to receive this stuff. It's amazing. I'm I'm totally. I'm just the audience for that. It's great. Yeah, but it, it's really great. You know, I, I think um, like looking glass back in the days as you described it. You know, we came here together uh, for great uh, interaction. So yeah. I, I, we have the right people here. I have the right guests. It's amazing. Oh, it's perfect. I, I, man. It's a real I love, pleasure. I love the episode already. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Sakaki, you had another question. So, go yeah. on with yeah, all yeah. I, I have I have at least three more. Um, Please. Yeah, starting with um, pr probably the one you can remember the most. Um, so, uh, there's one site that archives a lot of stuff from before the release of the game. It, this is where I grabbed the uh, pictures that I show you. And there is one concept that is very, very old, and that was the Mage Towers. And it's apparently it dates back from Dark Camelot. And that was implemented in Thief Gold many years after. And I wanted to know if you know anything about the development of this concept and level in particular. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, you're putting up the... Uh... Oh, where my... Where did it go? Shoot, am I still? I'm still here. Everyone can hear me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My uh, Discord seems to have disappeared. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, it's still there in the little uh, taskbar things. You know the symbols. Oh, so a... just open it up, and then then you will see the overlay again. One second. And I won't cut that out because we are so natural. <laughs> there um, we go. But I, I can fetch a screenshot of it. There we know. I got it. I've got, I'm all the way back. All right. Sorry for my old person. Uh, no, no. Right there. Discord. Discord is. <laughs> you know, we made Stephen Russell uh, using Discord. So. Uh... <laughs> hey man, <laughs> it's tough on us old. What are you gonna do? <laughs> we try to stay current. <laughs> you are not a Stephen Russell age, so uh, <laughs> don't give you okay, that. Okay, so I, I am back. Do you have a link? Yeah, look, this there. image this image is called looking up at the Mage Tower, and you can see that this oh, is right. super rough. Like you still have the sprite uh, for the bow. So this dates back from yeah, the whole right. Thief, the Dark Project. It's just the Dark sure. Project. And uh, yeah, this is a very, very old concept. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, where, how shooters were, like like Duke Nukem at that time with those 2D weapons. Yeah, uh, the sprites. You, yeah. They uh, pop up. That's great. That's great. I, I barely remember this. Barely, barely. Like, this seems familiar, but I can't tell you too much yeah, more about I, it. I, I can understand. Yeah. It's just yeah. so many years that's ago. Yeah, that's that's way back. And uh, there's another thing as well. Um, in the uh, Lord Bafford's Manor briefing, there is a an establishing shot of the manor's entrance with a with a horse carriage, and that entrance is actually not present in the uh, final game. It was cut <laughs> before development <laughs> and replaced with another entrance. And uh, do you know anything about why it was cut? 
I can't say that I do. Uh, I, you know, things were pretty, pretty fluid. Uh, and sometimes it was because we ran out of time and sometimes it was because we had better ideas. Um, uh, but uh, once, like things were tight enough that once something was painted, we would rarely have time to go back and, and repaint. Uh, mm -hmm. and I think that just sort of fell off the plate for us. Oh, yeah. I, I, I will take the, I'll take the hit on that one. I, that's, that's, that's definitely my responsibility to have uh, corrected that. No, no, but that, that is that is uh, totally plausible. <laughs> yeah. And uh, finally, my final question is super nerdy. So the, the game uh, FIFA one takes place around April and May, and because you can find the dates in uh, Lord Baffer's ledger and some documents in Donald's right. Manor. And uh, the, the ending cutscene has uh, a wintry landscape with snow and stuff. Which looks right. amazing. Yeah, so do you know why exactly it's winter? Uh, do, do you, do uh, I you can think... definitely answer that from my point of view. It's because sure. it, looks, it looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's an acceptable answer. <laughs> like, uh, I, I believe that even came up, uh, at, like, well, after the like after I had animated, like I think someone's like, well, I don't know if that's the right time of year, uh, but we were like, well, we can. It's all just sort of nebulous. We can just sort of say that this is a conversation that happened, you know, a little while later. Like they didn't really catch up until something something. And I was like, I don't, I don't know if that's true, but it looks great. So let's let's keep it. And uh, and we just stuck with it. Like oh, that's the. Yeah. I have an answer to that. Mm -hmm. I, I know why it happened. Uh, in in the real world, uh, in the mm -hmm. thief world, because um, there was um, in the mid age, there was a time where there was like for years it was a whole all winter, and right, yeah. And nowadays, uh, you know, scientists found out that it was maybe because of a volcano in I think South America that uh, right, right, yeah, that remember, spread right, all, this, yeah. all this ashes over the planet, and that's why uh, it was so cold. And since Thief is an alternate mid-age themed universe, I think it was because of that, because the volcano at that time broke out and then got winter and summer. Yep, that, yeah. I think that makes perfect sense. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to endorse it, uh, yeah. even though I can tell you directly that it's because I like painting snow. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> one, one, one of my theories was like, oh, Garrett has his mechanical eye, so it takes place many months after. But <laughs> I just right, wanted right, to right, know. Exactly. Well, this is the like. Here's this is just uh, this is true for all things nerdy. I'm a giant, giant nerd, and uh, what I love about um, like I don't know any big fandom like Star Trek or Star Wars or anything like that is that like when fans are in love with something, right? You like you know you've done it right when there's something clearly wrong with like the fiction, like you messed it up in some <laughs> way. And the fans go out of, like they break their backs to figure out <laughs> how it could be real and how it could fit into the fiction. You know, just like, how, how you know, how come, you know, uh, if you got the transporter in Star Trek, why not just, you know, transport a 20 Kirks down there and just print 20 Kirks? And then the fans are like, uh, there must be a reason. And then they come up with one and it's great, you know? And like, <laughs> they, and like I think that like what's, it tells you that you've, created an involving world right oh yeah but, with, but it, it's really representative like and this is sort of thematic for this entire discussion it's like that it isn't like i don't believe in an artistic relationship with an audience that is one way i believe that if you are watching something you are a part of that thing and that uh it, you could because your relationship to the artwork is you're creating this within yourself so that you enjoy it the most right yeah. and, and then and i don't you know that doesn't mean that you know fans should have you know control over what creators do you know and dictate stuff to them but rather they do have control over their own experience and the way it fills out within your heart when you're experiencing it is yours and the, as a creator if you've done your job right like you give the the audience all the tools to do that because that's where their real love of the work lies. It's not in what you did. It's in what it's what they are doing. You know that is that is why art is wonderful is because it evokes a story that is within you that the creator has no idea of. You know, and so when you look at Dominus's Gloomwood painting, like if any one of us were to write a story to back that up, 
it would fit, but all those stories would be different and very personal to ourselves. Yeah. You know, and like, that's the, that is what's so uh, effective about, uh, you know, great world building or the why, yeah. why it works so well is because the real creativity comes from the people who are playing the game. And that's and, what makes it so meaningful. And you, you also wrote a world that is mysterious enough that you can fill in the blanks with whatever you want. Because uh, exactly. for, for the Black Parade, we we follow the, uh, the Dark Project script uh, pretty much to the letter, but we have expanded so much on it. Like we wrote pages and pages and pages of documentation. And we have also many things that are left to the player so they can fill in the blanks themselves. Yes, it's yes. very interesting. That's great. That's great. I'm really, I'm really excited to check out Black Parade. That sounds really fantastic. Like that's right in line with, like, it, it, in terms of like my own personal philosophy of how why this stuff works so well. Like that's exactly the way to do it. I'm, I'm really wondering when you two guys get married. <laughs> we're gonna work out sometime next year. It's totally easy, easy on me. Yeah, this year is not so cool, but maybe if the distant rules change, you can uh, work things out. <laughs> well, it's it's all good. Good. It will be a freeway with Dominus. <laughs> exactly. That's oh. uh, this is what this podcast is about. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's just a thrilling show. That's um, right. That's right. Yeah. I'm I'm very very uh, happy and proud to be on the show with you guys, and I'm and I'm really I'm very thankful to uh, uh, to wow. talk about all this stuff. Thank yeah. You. Thank, you. thank you. And you know, for us, it's always. Uh, such an amazing opportunity to talk to original uh, cast uh, cast members, but uh, original members of the creation team. You know, um, always I say always. You are you are after Stephen Russell. You're the second one, but every time it's always, it's man. I don't get else. I don't get used to it. You know, because it's so amazing <laughs> all the time. Um, Guys, I have I have an idea, a super idea. Uh, hear me out. Uh, we make a new podcast with Dan. But we discuss every cutscene from Thief. One hour. Each I can't do a third podcast. Actually, <laughs> you can do it. Come on. I have private life. There's a, one of my favorite podcasts that I've ever heard. Is um, I'm a big fan of the Michael Mann movie Heat from 19 with Al Pacino and um, Robert De Niro. Yeah. And uh, and uh, uh, there is a, a guy that was so fanatical about that movie that he created a podcast called One heat minute and he watched he had guests on this is like hundreds of episodes uh where wow. he, he did one minute of the film and they would reveal or they would review for an hour one <laughs> minute of the film but, and that's, that's it, it's two hours long right <laughs> it's exactly right and what's amazing is it, it just became so ridiculous and they're so enthusiastic about it i, I don't remember, i can't remember it was a full hour but it was like it was a full podcast right and the and the uh they did the whole film and at the end they got the director to be on the show to talk wow. about it. And wow. like that is a dream come true. Right oh yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, yeah you know kind of you know we had to go through all those um fan mission <laughs> authors to finally get to you guys, you know. It's <laughs> <laughs> that's right one thief minute that's what we got to do yeah it's, yeah it's, no i'm kidding it's it's amazing to talk about the fan missions because uh they you know there are so many mechanics and and, and how creative those guys get um it's uh, yeah outstanding well, um, I, really, I, really lo I, I really love that uh because everyone's treating it like it's like how um like my uh my youngest son he plays a lot of uh games that like look 8-bit like 8-bit has become a style Right, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think that that's the right way to treat working with Dromed. You know, working with the old engine is like, yeah, it's limited. It's limited, but that's what's great about it. That's what sets you free is how, yes. but uh, how chunky it is, and how with the limitations on what you can do. Are you, you think... aware of a new dark? No. So Skeki, maybe you can explain new dark to Daniel. Yeah, because, so, so, uh... I was going to say that limitations breed creativity, and. Uh... Uh, so a few years ago, I think it was 2012, uh, there was a, 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 an event that really disturbed everything in the world of Dromed and Thief editing. And that was the release mm -hmm. of a, uh, an updated version of a dark engine that we dubbed New Dark that, you know, that really smashes the old limits. So instead, oh, in, yeah, instead of, uh, of uh, 1,024 polygons in view max, you can now have up to... 
20k or something which is incredible oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so yeah. you can you can really go nuts with uh yeah, with the architecture crazy. and uh we've been able to make these missions that are really huge and also very detailed compared to what you could do before and uh for sure. uh, for black parade for example we take full advantage of that so uh, in the in the map that i pasted this is the whole playground that you you have and everything is fully detailed and you have many interrupted buildings and stuff, and this is all possible oh, yeah. thanks to New Dark. But there are still limitations. Uh, we are still limited in a certain hard limits that cannot be broken without rewriting the engine completely. So we still have to right. to 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 be careful with what <laughs> what we do, pretty much. Oh yeah, absolutely. And because I mean, like the like any time you create, it's like um, I know I keep on talking about movies, but like there's a famous thing that people say. Uh, uh, like after Jaws came out, right? Spielberg's Jaws, like there is a um, there's this uh, idea of like not showing the monster is scarier, mm-hmm. right? And uh, which is true in Jaws. Like Jaws works because the shark didn't work. The shark puppet they had was bad, and it, it didn't work. So they had to come up uh, with other ways to make the movie work, and uh, and. Like that, what it says, what that says to me is like, you know, limitations uh, uh, by themselves are not good or bad, but anything that puts you in the state of mind to think harder about what you're doing is good, you know? And uh, so like with Jaws, Spielberg had no uh, other choice than to make a great movie. Like he couldn't ride on the fact that they had a great puppet shark. Like he had to make a great movie, and uh, and so he did. Uh, however, at the same time, you know, there's one of my favorite movies of all time is John Carpenter's version of The Thing. Oh yeah, I love it. And it's incredible. And The Thing very explicitly shows the monster. Like that couldn't be. It's like right in your face and incredibly gory all the time. Um, uh, so the idea that not showing the monster is good breaks with The Thing. Like yeah. they obviously show the monster, but they're still making a great film. And so when you're talking about a black parade, like the fact that I mean, everything you're saying about what this is and the stuff that I've seen from it, like, like obviously you have less limitations technically, but the you're committing to making a, a great piece of work within the aesthetic that was the aesthetic may have been diff, diff, you know, like uh, cr- the aesthetic may have been created from the limitations, but now the aesthetic works of itself. And making something great within that means you can break the rules that we had previously and come up with new great stuff, uh, as opposed to being nostalgic and just trying to create or you know recreate Thief, like the stuff that Black uh, 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 Black Parade looks like looks like a new game that I would want to play now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was that was the plan. We didn't we didn't want to remake Thief because Thief already exists, but we wanted to expand on it and also uh, put our own touches. So the art direction is slightly different, uh, and uh, many things are similar, but in a weird way. You, yeah, it's supposed to be a bit uh, unfamiliar and familiar at the same time. It's hard to I explain, it. but, and the, the story it. itself is based around that feeling as well. So it yep. all ties together. <laughs> oh, I can't wait, man. I can't wait. That sounds great. That sounds perfect. It should be a boss game. Totally. Ah, yeah. We are all looking totally forward to that. And I can imagine that, uh, Dan, that you are uh, looking forward to play it, actually. Very uh, definitely. You know, Skeki and the team, they are very old school. So, uh, yeah. And, and you can hear great voices in it. Um <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you ever need any voice acting in your future work, let me know. I love doing that stuff. Oh, no, 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 it's over. Uh, <laughs> oh, I need to think about that. No, I'm out <laughs> because I was inspired by your voice, uh, God voice, and now I'm out. Because... <laughs> we, we, we actually, uh, yeah, we, actually <laughs> we actually have a, a, a guy who goes by the name of Master Feed Free, who does a bang on impression of your guard, oh, and we and we, we use it uh, in the uh, in the campaign. Oh great, 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 great! I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Really we 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 have a we have a Benny impersonator who is spot on as well, and uh, yeah, we, so we, awesome. we have many many voices like this. So, so yeah. are you telling Dan like, no, you you don't need you. 
absolutely. No, no. Tell me that. That's okay. No, no. Yes, please. No, but, yes, but, yes, absolutely. No, but, absolutely. But, but, Dude, this is your thing, man. Like, what? Like, just, just no, no, no. <laughs> there are new talents now. Absolutely. I'm an it's old just, man. Uh, you don't need me. Good lord. Uh, like, it's, absolutely. It's just, it's just that I'm worried about legal stuff because the IP oh, is owned by. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't think if you can, I don't think you can voice characters that are owned by the IP holders in fan projects. Yeah, that's probably cause, true. Yeah, because people have that's asked true. Stephen Russell to voice Garrett, and he said, "No, I can't because of legal that's reasons." That's not right. But you can name the guard difference. Next, actually, uh, was asking me like, "What do you think? How how expensive Stephen Russell would be? Because he's still designing his mission, and he's actually working on it again." Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that he's still believing in his dream, like having Stephen Russell and then Daniel <laughs> Thron. And maybe we can ask all the other guys that were uh, voicing uh, the characters. So, yeah, uh, I think we will ha we will have in the near future we will have original cast Thief games. Um, maybe Tim Stelmark <laughs> can. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. bring the bang, bring the gang back together, and yeah. uh, but but maybe maybe we can have a, a character with your voice in the Black Parade. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, that, that, someone who's complaining be... about the art or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have to I'll have to write a, a new character, but we can do something. Things don't even work the way they used to. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We, we can we can we'll definitely do that. that. <laughs> be perfect. That'd be perfect. No, I'm I'm super excited, man. Absolutely, I can't wait to see this thing come out. I, 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 can't, I can't believe this room has more than a table and a chair. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want me to play the bitchy old man, I can do that without even trying. Like, oh yeah, no, no, we, 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 we're just taking lines from the podcast, and then... <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, exactly yeah, right. We have characters that are bitchy, so what can work. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before I forget, um, there was one other question. Uh, but before I ask that, um, did you design the box art for the original game? Uh, yes, I believe. Let me let me pull it. Up okay, right so I then the question makes that. sense because Mac D11 uh, mm -hmm. asked, um, "What was it like designing the box art for the Dark Project, the iconic one with a fire arrow?" Also, try asking other oh, <laughs> how they feel about the direction of Dishonored. We had that Dishonored thing already, but uh, yeah, designing the box art, uh, how was that for oh, you? Yeah. Yeah, and did and and may I add, uh, did you also design uh, the Thief Two box art? I did, yes, yes. Oh, uh, oh. And, it is fantastic. My favorite is Thief Two's. Oh, yes. thank you very much. Amazing. Yeah. That, and uh, I have to also say that that is with the assistance of um, General Baudelaire and Mark Lazat, uh, for uh, especially for Thief Two's uh, box art. That was uh, uh, we really we really put a lot of work into that one. Um, the original one uh, is uh, that was I don't know. It's not much to say about the process. It's sort of like a standard. You know, um, it was my first experience in doing box art. So uh, I had never had to do anything that was so high res before, which was a concern back then. You know, and, uh, you know, Photoshop and the computer, I was working on a pretty fast computer for the time. But like when you start doing. Was it 233 megahertz or what? Yeah, it was, it was a, I can't remember. It was a, shoot, like the name is right there. Pentium 2. It was yeah. It was like at the at the time it was I was given one of the best boxes in the in the company because you know I paint uh, you know I paint was painting exclusively in Photoshop and um, which is a memory hog right and that's just doing regular at that time it was like six forty four eighty right um, and but when you're doing a box you know the the box art stuff you're working at a much higher DPI you know it's like three hundred DPI and so you're doing these uh, comparatively gigantic paintings and you can manipulate you know at that time like you can manipulate photographs and slide them around and clip them and all that stuff but actually doing painting where you're smearing the paint and you know trying to work with it like it's paint uh on a huge file like that on a you know on a 486 like it was deathly slow like you'd make this paint stroke and then you'd wait about 10 seconds for it to crawl across the screen you know, as it figured out the uh, math. And so I remember that being uh, difficult. So we, I painted it smaller and then scaled it way, way, way up. And um, and then I went in and sort of repainted on top of it. And uh, 
uh, uh, so it was, a, it was a longer process than we wanted. Um, and I remember like the, the face is literally that's Josh Randall's face. Like we just took a photo of Josh that matched it and stuck it in there. And I painted on top of it uh, to make that work uh, and save us some time. And then, uh, and the logo, uh, I want to say that we originally animated the logo before we did the box design, but I did the, I did that as, I think I originally designed the logo as part of an animation test. I don't know. That's hard for me to remember. Um, but it was, we just took what was already in that and then scaled it up and, and cleaned it up. Um, but now I do the stuff, you know, as, you know, like that, like I did, you know, I've done paintings for movies that are like, you know, 30,000 pixels by 30,000 pixels. Um, and back then, like you could barely load anything that was over maybe 6,000 pixels. And, and to think of it that all these, all those files are lost in time. They're all gone. Nothing it's survived. Destroyed. Yeah, I'd be shocked if any of that stuff still existed. But I remember there was a, a logo that was like more like stained glass one. What is before or? Yeah, there was one of those kicking around. I know that oh, they yeah. changed it slightly oh, for Thief Three. They made like they put a blocky edge to the E in Thief Three. Um, so there's been some variations. Uh, I prefer the Thief, like the original Thief One logo design, is the one that is my favorite. Like I'm, I'm most attracted to. You mean that yellow, more um, straight? Yeah, like the um, yeah, the one that I'm looking at at least right now is the. Uh, right. Yeah, like the the triangular box with the white text is the one I'm happen to be looking yeah. at right now. Ah, okay, and... because I think um, that is actually something I really like uh, about uh, that the logo totally um, differs from from the art design. You know, the art design is more really brushed. You know, like yeah. like you know big lines, and this is really thin and sleek, and still it, it it's a bit disturbed, and it looks like someone like Zorro. Or T yeah. Thivoro uh, cut um, into something, and right. and, and, and I really love that. I, I love the thief too logo. Um, oh yeah, I like that one too. I was happy with that one as well. Especially yeah, like, because of I like warmer colors, and and mm -hmm. and uh, it totally uh, gets me there. But like yeah, art wise, I would say the thief two box is a much better box. I like the like the painting is better and the overall layout is better. But uh, yeah. the thief, the thief one box is pretty great. I don't know if I did. I ever tell this story uh, on the podcast. I don't know uh, how I got to Thief Two because uh, I, uh, I I will remember that for forever because I bought uh, something for my hard earned uh, pocket money. Uh, it was a it was I think it was called Game Development Kit 3.0 or something like that. And you know they marketed it as like you can easily create your own games. And my idea was oh let's create a thief like game. You know I was like twelve and. Um, and it was just an engine. It was really hard. You 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 had to like, like the box was really heavy because you had a big book instructing you with the programming language. And after a week, I was like, ah, damn, I can't do that. And <laughs> it was really sad because like it was like fifty bucks at that time right. for me. So then I went to my parents and I told them like, yeah, uh, it doesn't work on my computer, even if the requirements are. Uh, working uh it's 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 not working so then we went back to the store and uh and i was uh yeah one wanted, wanted to get back my money and my mom did it for me and hmm. then i walked through um through the lanes and in, in the shop and then i saw that box art because it must have been the week thief 2 was released right because the, the week earlier i didn't see that and I, I was a big thief fan at that point and um then I was like, damn. And it was one buck more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like going to my mom, like, hey, could we maybe just, you know, exchange the product? And, uh, but I don't have the buck. And she was like, yeah, you know what? Get it. And, um, <laughs> and, and, and then she bought it for me or, you know, and uh, we exchanged it. And, uh, but then we had to drive to another city, go shopping. And the whole time I, I was reading the manual and, uh, I was so excited. Yeah. That, that's my favorite thief memory from back in the day. That's awesome. Um, that is absolutely awesome. Because of the artwork, you know, it totally stuck out. It was on top of the shelf. Um, and yeah and then i had the the uh walkthrough book book you know um 
they released that uh, back in the days and that had it in big and it was like oh like uh, you know really shiny and so beautiful i lost it but yeah a beautiful artwork it's so beautiful oh man that's so fun that's so great yeah god i'm i'm so god i'm so happy all this stuff exists oh you look at this the i'm looking at the uh the comparison to all the uh uh the thief logo logo designs yeah Yeah. um yeah i did uh i did the first one two three four five i did the first five no i did the first four i'm sorry i was the first four so the not thief three Dominus uh, really likes the yellow FIFA dark project with a stained glass. He really, really uh, Oh yeah, it. yeah. I think yeah. it looks very good. D- Dominus designed our podcast logo after that, I guess. Oh, that's great. I for- I'd forgotten about that one entirely. That is, I think, the first one we did. Uh, dark project is obviously before that, but the first, the very first stab at thief was this for sure the, the first logo on the picture um, was the one um, that was released in Europe. Because in oh, really? Europe, uh, in Europe, the first two games uh, were uh, went called Thief. They were called uh, the Dark Project because yeah. um, IDOS uh, they uh, feared that you know, like Germans or French people or whatever, they they can't pronounce it correctly. And they, they oh, go right, to the right. store and I were like, um, yeah, do you have the game Thief? Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> or Thief. Right. Uh, and, and, and then the guy is no. maybe checking the computer and it's like, what? Something with S in the beginning? No, we don't have <laughs> and, and, um And so nobody bought it. Nobody bought it anyways. But um, yeah. what, what's really funny is that in uh, in French and German, at least, I know that the subtitle for Thief is not the Dark Project, it's the Thieves Guild. Which is funny considering oh, uh, it's independent in French. In oh, it's German, not in French. It's, 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 in, in, in German, it's uh, uh, the Dark Project, uh, the Master Thief. Oh, uh, oh interesting. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's the, the Thieves Guild in French. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. French, yeah. I'm but, sure that you guys uh, know. French. I'm sure you guys know this, but the uh, like the reason why it was called the Dark Project is because that was the title of the Excel document. Uh, like it was uh, like like a bit of, we knew we were going to call it dark Camelot. It was going to be something dark, right? So on the <laughs> on the planning document, it was like untitled dark project. That's really we, cool <laughs> because you, you managed to to retrofit it into Constantine's plan. You called yes. it the dark project. <laughs> the dark project. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah that's it, so funny. You know, yeah. it, it somehow made sense. You know, it, it wasn't the title wasn't wasn't disturbing. Uh, right. So uh, yeah. Um, I think today they would call it like arrow shooter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All one word. Yeah. Arrow shooter. I like arrow that. shooter. <laughs> deadly shadows. And, uh, Sorry, deadly arrows. <laughs> yeah. Arrow, sh- <laughs> yeah. arrow shooter. Deadly arrows. Great. I love it. Let's do this. Well, and, and, and people on the internet would just ca- call it like uh, ASDS. Yes, exactly. And then, and then ASDA. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> so that's it's awesome. really hard. That's great to know that that got that dark project got used though. That's that's nice. Like uh, yeah, yeah, for our stupid Europeans. But then Thief yeah. three, they uh, it was suddenly Thief three, and that was like okay. I knew you, you know because I was a fan. But you know, you know, do people make the connection? You know, like uh, it was strange. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. And I, and I have to I have to say I I do like the the new the Thief four. The final design there, the uh, yeah, the logo the, is quite nice. I like lo- it. the logo. It's really pretty great. It's a, uh, it's definitely got a, uh, got a great vibe to it, and it, and it sort of harkens back to the, uh, the first Thief logo on the list. That's kind of, it's kind of nifty. But it, it, F4 for all its uh, shortcomings has a very, um, very unique style to it, but you don't find yep. anywhere else. It yep. has a very coherent world overall. I think. Yeah, I think that like the yeah, like I'm gonna. Um, because I, I I bought it. I have it, you know, on the Xbox. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna play through the rest of it. Like I I did. I got a, I got a kick out of it. Uh, like I can see what people are um, complaining about. But the um, but if you don't think of it as a as a thief game, it's a good game. It's a fun game. Yeah, but um, that's always a very bad mark for a game. You know, like don't think of the game uh, as it is. <laughs> you know, like oh, yeah, 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 sure. But you know, I, I actually I, I'm not on the hard side because I I liked it. You know, mm-hmm. kind of, uh, but I totally agree. They they didn't uh, f up the art or the no no no. They, no, no, they, no, they, they, they totally f up the characters. You know, like yeah. Garrett totally naive and and uh, 
yeah. Uh, Which the thing is, I mean, I'm not even, I'm not very hardcore about keeping things the same. Like if they had made it utterly new and change Garrett into something else entirely on purpose and all this stuff. Like, I think that's all totally free game. I don't, no. I don't mind when I, I, I know I'm alone in this, but like, I don't, uh, you know, like it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me if something is radically different. Uh, as as honestly, I, I, I do prefer the fee for what we got over that modern, uh, modern uh, day project that they had. Like if it, I think it was called daggers, dagger of ways or something. And that had that had Garrett in the modern world with guns oh. and, and stuff. It was very weird. I don't think it would have worked very well. I think so. Right. I don't know. Yeah, like I, th I think that's the problem. Is that like you have to if you're going to make something like uh, let's see if I can say this concisely. Like I th every time you make something, whether you're making a remake or a reboot or something totally original, like you have to come at it like you're making something totally original. Like you have to make the thing great unto itself however you make it. And when you don't commit to that, or when you're leaning too hard on nostalgia or people's feelings about something, then it's not, and that's going to weaken your product. Like you have to, you have to say, this is the new thing, 100%. And so I think that all, I, all, all sequels or reboots or whatever it is need to be judged on whether or not, and this goes for movies as well, need to be judged on whether or not they themselves are good. And yeah. uh, and I think that uh, so I think it's better to look at Thief, the new game, as like, hey, that's a pretty good game. I like that game, um, rather than it fails to be old Thief. No, um, I, I totally you know? disagree. And uh, that that if but the the problem that they run up against is that if you're going to take on being a sequel to Thief, you like you have to be aware that there's all, all people that feel differently about this. And mm -hmm. that you're that you are that you are carrying on some sort of legacy, yeah, yeah. and that's got to be part of what you think about when you do it. And so I, th I think I, I think that they may have run into some trouble in terms of making hard decisions about that. And, no, no. Uh, and they could they could have they they could have made a better game, but it is a good game. May I? Um, you know, I think they got the wrong things wrong. Um, yeah, sure. We, I can see totally like the old guys, like uh, like from the thief community, that like, like they would never accept anything that adds something new to the thief uh, sure. formula. So, but I, I I'm not the person, you know. I'm, I'm I'm like yeah, games evolve, the whole industry involves, the whole technology yeah. involves, and and you do different things, yes. But what they did wrong, uh, in my opinion, was the wrong stuff because, first of all, you know, you. I didn't expect a thief game like the first ones. Of course, it's a new game, it's a new technology. But what they they didn't even recognize the f hammerites, the you know everything that was before. Right. Seemed right. like the whole world had never heard of the big influential um, religious stuff that happened. <laughs> right, it's just gone. You know, it's just <laughs> right, a, right. never happened. There's no reference to anything like that. And there, that there's, is... there's a few, but they're subtle. And I actually do like what they tried to do with it. Not necessarily what they did, but I but, liked the idea of it. If that yeah, makes that, sense. But I think that was the maybe the nerdy guys working in the company that know of the origins and Probably, you know, they, yeah. they really right. wanted to bring this to the table but uh, so th they didn't nail that then they totally um effed up um garrett because the moment where he trusts that you know i can't even remember him because he was so you know uncreative the the, the guy he, he was the main enemy at the end who, right. who who tries to be a friend uh or acts like it you know and garrett like you kind of trusts him and this is not garrett the way he acts and and and, and the whole thing you know um yeah. there is yeah i was happy when i heard that there is like basso and and he named mm -hmm. the crowd genevieve that was like uh, in the promotion material before the game release i was like oh they are really onto something and i trusted uh idos montreal because they really did an awesome job with the deus x revival Sure, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Which was amazing. Uh, Human yep. Revolution was an amazing game. Yeah, very good. And 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 I was like, hey, they did that. Uh, you know, think of uh, Deus Ex Two, which never existed in our minds. But <laughs> now, now they nailed it. They really put 
right. the whole formula into a modern game. And mm -hmm. I trust them to do that with Thief. And they didn't. Uh, because of details. And the rope arrow thing. That was, I think, the biggest gameplay thing they... Well, that's a, yeah. The, the rope, like that's a that's a perfect example of like what the the pr the problem that I ran into it my, with my, with my own experience is like there is a game that exists that does this very interesting, unique thing, which is Thief, right? And I it that sort of sets a standard for this particular interaction. Yeah. Like I'm like this is great. So if you're going to change it. You now have to make something that's as fresh and interesting as that mechanism. Um, if you're going to if you're going to alter that mechanism, you better come up with something that is comparable or probably better than that mechanism. Uh, otherwise, it's going to suffer from comparison. And like that's the like what it did was like it just like they you know like there are certain things that you can shoot at and all this kind of stuff. I'm just like, oh, this is the stuff I I put up with in other games. They've taken out something that I really enjoyed that is still very original, and they've in favor of uh, and, and gotten rid of that in favor of something that is kind of boring and and universally boring in other games. It's not necessarily bad, and the design around it and how they used it is is good. Um, but it does it like it makes it forces a comparison that they didn't need to force. Yeah, and you know? uh, one thing that is uh, something that suf that really suffers with this game is that it's not so much the story or the presentation, which are I think, I think the presentation itself is fine, the story not so much, but that can be brushed aside. I don't really care that much about the story if the game's good, you know. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And, uh, and the main problem I have with V four is mostly the tech because. Uh, Fever Dog Project had some incredible programmers on it. The, yeah, the, the right. guys who created the sound propagation system no, it's and insane. the AI, it's, it's, it's yeah. crazy. And yeah. even, even the old lighting model that was improved upon with Deadly Shadows with the full dynamic lighting that is, yeah. to this day, still amazing to look at. And all of that is sort of sort of disappeared with V4. Like they, 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 they didn't have a good sound propagation, so you don't exactly know where the guards are uh, specially, which is what was very important in the old games. I think because and, they didn't focus on simulation. They just... Yeah. Wanted, yeah. That's, yeah the, that's, that's the key, that's man. Problem. That's the key. I mean, because that, like, they understood that, like, yeah, like, not only were you, like, his, the old guys, you know, like, uh, you know, like, uh, Kay Jenkins and Chris Carollo and Mark LeBlanc and Matt McKenzie and all these people, like, like, these are really, really brilliant uh, programmers, you know, uh, Sean Parrott, uh, and stuff like that, and like, uh, but they weren't separate from game design. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. like they they knew like everyone was like this was a constant conversation. You know, and uh, like uh, when you when you're stuck with things, this happens in movies also. For instance, like the in doing visual effects for movies, like uh, have you guys seen the movie um, Ex Machina? Yeah. Uh, the robot movie. Uh, Ex Machina won the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects, and it and it's great looking. And it's, I love the movie, and it's great looking. Um, and it won it over. I can't remember exactly which one it was, but some essentially a triple A title like Avengers or something like this. It beat out one yeah. of these major movies, and uh, the industry is really upset about it. And I was like, because most you know you talk to people in VFX, and they'd be like, but the stuff that we did for you know, this giant expensive movie was so much more complicated, you know, with the rendering, some, like, we were doing incredible things with shaders and stuff that, blah, blah, and like, it doesn't matter. It What matters is the art. Like, mm -hmm. like yeah. the art <laughs> the, uh, the the small crew did to make Ex Machina, like, yeah, you can talk to me all day long about how it was easier for them, right? Because they didn't have to handle 50 superheroes on the screen at the same time. But the fact is, it's better because I'm more involved in it, and it feels personal. Like that's why it works. Like the people who created the visual effects were obviously working hand in hand with the people that created the story. Like they're telling the same story, you know. Whereas, like when I've been, when I've worked on giant um, projects, you know, Avengers style projects, like the pipeline that creates that stuff is very impersonal, and so the effects may be. Uh, like complex, but they're also boring. And I think that this is what 
the problem you run into with AAA titles and the and the and the the basic uh, pipeline of creating a AAA title is everything is so um, uh, uh, separate, you know, and separated um, that you don't get the cross pollination of ideas that you need to make a great game or a great film, and you uh, and you kill the inspiration that you should be all aiming at the same story or all aiming at the same game. You're all part of it. Everybody in the company is a game designer. That doesn't mean you're literally designing levels, but you're part of making the experience. I think um, maybe the industry got too big uh, and the organization's too big for games like Thief, you know, where everything has to work together uh, and and has to be created together uh, to to, to make the whole product uh, you know, making work, um, and 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 yeah, they, you know, look at Assassin's Creed. You know, they 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 are built in like three, four, or five different studios all over the world, and then they are mm-hmm. put together. And because the 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 whole um, idea of the game, I think, um, you know, was you know was created in that process. You know, uh, you know. Right. The, you, you, and, and Thief doesn't work like that because right. uh, it breathes so much of the art and, and, and the ideas and creativity of the audio design. And, 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 and of course, it's never a good sign. Like for, for Thief, uh, the, I think the, the main creative designer changed two or three times and um, they had the original audio designer. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. then, but he left like, right, right, yeah. pretty close to the finalization of the product. So, yeah, that's never a good sign, you know. And and yeah, right. but but uh, I think we should, uh, yeah, now uh, <laughs> finish our ranting about Thief. Absolutely, Fall. absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, like I would like to wrap it up by saying something positive, which is that, like, I first of all, I think that they like. I know that people hammer on them. I think that game is actually quite good. It uh, has it has great it moments. Has, it has great moments, and, and the art is really spectacular. All the set building yeah. is amazing throughout <laughs> it. The art's fantastic, yeah. Yeah, and the, I think uh, they and, nailed the city. Absolutely, it's I mean it's crazy, it's beautiful, you know, and uh, and and so and like the feeling Garrett moves, you know, with that yeah. hush moving. Uh, oh, it's, it's terrific. That, that is something like I was like, yeah, that 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 uh, oh, I was missing in the original games because that yeah. would actually make sense that you would fast cover uh you know hush into a shadow and 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 yeah that's that's an, you know modern modern game design you know that makes yeah. sense you know, yeah absolutely. it's not all bad uh, yeah. and so like with, with that with that in mind you know like the good thing about um big this is true for movies also the good thing is that triple a stuff is becoming boring to people because it's the the effect of making these giant pipeline things with a thousand people and everything is incredibly detailed blah 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 it all looks very uniform and dull and nobody's impressed by great visual effects anymore like you're only impressed ever by art by good art right yeah, we've, we've and reached a peak yeah we've reached a peak in this like you can make it absolutely real looking and still boring and so now we've reached this in movies we've reached this in games and that's fantastic you want to get you need people to be bored of that stuff because the really great stuff you can make with 30 people you know with 20 people uh you can make it yourself and like a couple of friends and all of that finally all of that technology for games as well as film has become a reality for uh, you in an immediate sense like you don't have to sell it to anybody else you can make it yourself with five guys and make something that's amazing and i think that's the big story of thief right is mm-hmm. that like it started out as a bunch of scrappy folks you know uh uh men and women that were excited to be a part of each other's lives creatively it uh has bloomed into this tremendous a tremendously long term following because the art uh, and the design was very inspired and inspiring and now it to, from my point of view it's coming back and re-inspiring me you know at a point when uh my industry is changing movies are changing games are changing and now all those tools are in the hand or can fit in a you know uh, in one person's office and we have access to it again to be that creative ourselves and it pumps me up and it makes me want to do more art. Like that's awesome. And I'm that's why I'm extraordinarily 
uh, thankful to have been a part of this whole scene from soup to nuts is like, I'm going to come off of this thing today and I'm going to want to do stuff and paint and make things. And that's what I want uh, everybody who is listening to feel coming off of this. This is an incredible inspiration to see this come back to me. Uh, and just from my point of view and, uh, and I want people to be as active as you have been in making a uh, great new art ominous and as you have been in making black parade uh, and, and bring this all back out uh, again. It's, it's incredible. Thank you, man. Wow. <laughs> it's uh, very inspiring. That's... Yeah. Those are like amazing, great last words for the episode, I think. Um, or is there something uh, you guys want to add? Um, I just want to add, like, then, do you remember the animation project that we kind of started, wanted to do at some point, like 10 years ago or something? No, I guess not. Oh, I'm sorry. Could, uh, was that to me? I couldn't hear it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was like... There was a big plan of, like, I think someone just spoke to me, but it crackled out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. I apologize. Uh, do, you remember yes. the, do you remember the animation project that we talked about 10 years ago or something like that? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, if you're feeling inspired about painting stuff, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it, man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, it would absolutely. be nice. I would, would be nice. I, would, I, would love, I would absolutely love to integrate our stuff some way. That would be tremendous. We should definitely think mm -hmm. about that. Totally, yeah. No, awesome, man. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, I, th I think we could come to an end uh, now, if you guys are fine with it. Sounds good. Yep. Uh, yeah, it was a, an amazing discussion. I think um, I could imagine like uh, people will love this episode because it was very interesting. Um, Daniel, you are you have been so forthcoming uh, with all the information and all those um, behind the scenes uh, stuff you were telling us. And yeah, it, it really uh, opened um, my eyes and mind uh, in some ways. Uh, and yeah, you, you are a very charming uh, and forthcoming character. And yeah, that's why we are talking like almost every week uh, <laughs> about uh, movies I'm... and stuff. Thank you so much for having me on board, guys. This has been incredible. And Dominus, uh, yeah, thank you for making this possible. And it was amazing uh, to talk about your art uh, as well. Uh, and Skeki, you did an amazing job uh, as a supporting character in this. You you had all those amazing questions. And, and I think you really, uh, you, you added to this episode so much. Without you, ah, it would have been good. Well, Oh, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Much agreed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's amazing. Um, I'm really happy with it. And, and yeah. Uh, but Dan, please, um, if people want to hear more from you, tell us or tell the people uh, of your podcast uh, that you are doing about movies uh, so they can follow it. No, oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. I am uh, one of three hosts of a uh, show called Martini Giant um, at martinigiant.com. And uh, uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Martini Giant, I believe. And uh, we talk about all kinds of movies, um, but all three of us are um, visual effects guys. And so we have a little bit of inside uh, information about how things are made, um, but we're also very old school film nerds. Uh, so we get into very long, sometimes heated, but always enthusiastic discussions about these things. Like some of these episodes run almost four hours long and we've done 50 of them. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's pretty intense. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really, really great time. But, and but it's uh, very interesting, I have to say. Uh, oh, those, those guys are are tremendous, uh, uh, very very funny guys, and uh, and it's a, uh, like it, it's one of the few things that I have recorded that I also tend to listen to because I love the jokes that these guys tell. They're really really something. So Martini Giant, check it out. Yeah, if if you aren't to movies, it's really interesting, and you can if you aren't so much into movies, but you you can pick your movie that you maybe saw and liked. 
uh for me example it was um stalin's death the death of stalin the death of stalin yeah and and what i really like is how you after like third of the episode you totally get distracted and talk about totally other things but they are still so interesting um yeah uh, great stuff no uh, so people check that out and uh yes uh, I think we covered almost everything. Daniel, uh, you will call Tim Stelmark that he finally joins us because he doesn't respond <laughs> right to me on. on Twitter uh, <laughs> anymore. And um, we'll make it yeah, happen. <laughs> yeah. Th thanks to everyone involved. Uh, thanks uh, to you guys, to the listeners. And uh, see you next time. This was amazing. I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Only thing left bye for bye. me to do is to make bye. my exit.